say that are a little different. So, you know, like one, we're not being taped, and two, we've got to do minutes. Um, yeah, I will call it to order. 703? 704 now. All right. Call this meeting to order at 704. And if everyone would rise for a pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all. Did we have a visitor who got scared and left? Yeah. Okay. Just the all right. Um, just so you know, because we aren't on camera and people will ask what we did tonight, I'm going to have Joan take the minutes as usual because that's how people are used to reading them. But then I've pressed Tim into service over here to actually record everything and have dialogue that we will attach later as a secondary so that no one feels like they were left out. Okay? So for that, I'll try not to tell any long stories, Tim. And Tim's not feeling good tonight. I, I really appreciate the fact that all of you have braved the weather and conditions and everything else to get here tonight. All right. Um, we're not on camera, so we don't need to introduce ourselves. If we don't know who we are by now, we're in trouble. But I am going to turn over the presentation to you. So Actually, for the voice recorder, the introductions do have some value. Do they? Okay. Yeah. Well, then, in that case, Sonny, we'll start with you. We'll go around the entire room. I'm going to go one here and get each one. Okay. Just... We're going around the room yeah, for like a roll. Realize, yeah. okay, say your name. Oh, Sonny Kravitz. Thank you. Dave Wood. Brian Lapple. Mike Pierce. Jones. Joan Rice, Secretary. Eileen Latimer, Chairman. Stephen LeBranche. Bob Ladd. Mike Blue. Jim Walkman. Glenn Farrell. <coughs> Chuck Rage. Maureen Buckley. And John Jones. Thank you. All right. We're, for now, we're going to do just the presentation and discussion of the Hampton Beach Village District budget. And I didn't mention it, but tonight is Monday, March sec uh, 2nd, uh, 2015. Um, and we are at the Beach Fire <coughs> Station in the Village Precinct Meeting Room. And directly after the presentation and discussion, we will open it up for public hearing for anyone who would like to speak at that time. I want to make sure everybody has the operating budget for 2015. Okay. So we're all on the same book. We've done that before. We've had different pages and books. Um, if, if, if possible, I'd like to go through each section, if it's all right with you. Yes, correct. And then uh, ask that we'll talk about general government. And then if there's questions, you can, you, you can do that before we go on to the next section. Um, as I think everybody knows, I just want to explain how the tax station in Hampton Beach Village District works. There is, there's, in the budget, is separated by general government, and then the cultural and recreation is another section. All right. If I the, oh. got a question for you, Chuck. This figure of $490,442.10, is that the budget, the total budget number? No. 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 Page four. Okay. Five sixty-three three three seven. All right, Bob. Could I ask you to move the, the budget numbers for the precinct? Sure. Do you want to move the total? Please. I would move the total precinct budget in the amount of five hundred sixty-three thousand three hundred thirty-seven dollars. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Now we'll open it. Now, the, now we'll open it for presentation. So, in, in the, the way the village district works is, is we have two, tep, two separate uh, taxing amounts. There is the businesses and the people that have commercial interest in Hampton Beach pay the general government portion as well as the cultural and recreation portion. 
if someone lives on the beach and is a single res single family resident, they can ask for an exemption. Not they don't all do that, but some most of them do, uh, to be exempt from paying any tax on culture and recreation. So I want that to, to understand that. That the, the majority of the money on the culture and recreation is paid for by commercial interest in Hampton Beach. Okay. So we'll start with general government. Um, have the executive board figure the same as last year's budget at 3700 the financial at 8850 now if you notice in past years we do have the budget is always a little higher and, and uh, being in the budget committee you understand why that is I'm sure so uh, even though we're not spending that much we, we have to make sure there's enough in the budget to account for it uh, legal expenses at 12000 Last year we had a nice year, and the year before that we didn't have any major legal issues. We didn't have people trying to secede from the village district. We didn't have any anybody suing anybody, so it actually was a, it was, it was a nice year. This year we anticipate a little higher uh, because of some of the work we're doing um, uh, in, in the general government for purchasing property and and legal advice. Um, the garage no longer exists, as you see. Office furniture, I doubt we'll need anything. <coughs> anything in here is new, um, but we have a figure in there in case we need if someone breaks something or a table breaks. Or something. Uh, playground maintenance, that's um, been the regular uh, budget at 7500 Last year, we didn't spend that because we had closed out a trustee of the trust fund account. So the money that would normally have been taken out of that 7500 was used from that trustee of the trust fund account. And that was voted on at last year's meeting. We do anticipate some work that needs to be done. Every year we continue to upgrade or continue to upkeep. Uh, fortunately for us, we decided not to lock the playground the last five, six years, probably four or five years, maybe four or five years, and in the winter. And because of that, we don't have people breaking in and damaging things. It seems to it seems to work. Um, so that's that. That's one of the reasons that that's helpful for us. Uh, sign maintenance and repair. We have a few signs on either end of the of, of the beach and coming in off the bridge coming in from Winnicott Road, the sign and uh, Route 1 and Winnicott Road, they are on a rotating basis that they have to continually be upkeep, 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 excuse me, and uh, so this year we're looking at uh, $4,000 cost for, which one is it? That's going to be the bridge on the south side of the uh, bridge uh, near Seabrook, uh, the Seabrook Bridge. Insurance is we're fortunate. Uh, Dean Merrill has been finding us some great pricing, and our, our insurance has gone down from what we estimated last year. So we're hoping to, that it will stay down at at fifteen thousand. Um, and everything else is supplies and election costs. It's miscellaneous items. It's pretty minuscule at five thousand. And then we have our famous Joan here, the last one. She takes care of all our meetings and all our uh, minutes. Mm -hmm. So that comes to a subtotal of 57,585. It's actually down from last year's budget of 61,835, but it's up from the actual last year. The reason it's up mainly is because legal and right brown. So uh, um, should I keep going to the next page? And or you know what? Let's pause here and see if anybody has any questions on this section. Sonny, you have any questions? Dave, going around. <coughs> yeah, I have one question. I thought one of the signs got knocked down. One of the signs did get knocked down and was repaired. And the the right sign was knocked down two, four years ago. Oh, so it's all been fixed ever since then? Oh, oh yeah. We're yeah. basically, um, what we've been doing it, as Chuck um, spoke so about, is that we, we've been on rotation. The first one that went down was the um, one up one kind of road. We fixed that one. Then we fixed the one on 101, got done. 
and then we did the one uh, on the at the state park on the north side of the Neil Underwood Bridge, and now we're doing the one on the south side. Basically, it needs to um, repaint it, to, um, get some UV coating on it, and <coughs> maybe the one that we've been holding off on is the one uptown because every two or three years someone's trying to change the tea and it's like, I don't want to spend the money if they're going to rip it down. So we put that one on hold until the town <coughs> figures out how they're going to change that intersection. I thought one got knocked down recently. No, no, no it's been a while. It's been two okay. years ago. Yeah, the guy was drunk and drove across so the bridge. kid with no insurance. Yeah, the kid with no insurance and he was driving a Lexus, go figure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going, this is good. And then he has no insurance. Got to love him again. Yeah. Else on general government. Okay. Um, around the table. Yeah. Tim. We're talking general government here, and I see we have playground maintenance in the general government. Because playground is not recreational, right? Yet it says this item will reduce by Article One. By what magic will Article One reduce <laughs> the playground? <coughs> Article one is this election of commissioners. Exactly. But your budget says this <coughs> item will be reduced by Article One. I didn't write it. Where I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh so, I'm you know what? What? I beg your pardon, folks. Thank you for pointing that out. <laughs> I do want you to know that I sent this to the commissioners to proofread for me. <laughs> and somehow all all of us missed it. Thank you for pointing that out, Tim. Yeah, He's talking to, on page three, there's a line that needs to be taken away. Thank okay. you. Thank you, Mr. Jones. That you is mean taken away. No, it's I a would mistake. Move it's a mistake. to amend under 4194, section three, and strike from there, this will be reduced by article one. Second. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All those in favor? Opposed? Aye. You're opposed? And abstentions? <coughs> I'd like to be clear I was in charge of spelling. You did a good job. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> now that we've removed the, the spelling. Uh, okay. Now that we removed the confusing text, uh, perhaps somebody can tell me uh, what article it was intended to refer to. Or was that copied from last year? It's copied well? from last year. Uh -huh. Did that have to do with the fact that last year there was the money taken yes. from the fund, so you took exactly. this, copied it, the trustee, the trustee. Mm -hmm. and I've made a few of those mistakes. So, uh, so there is no article that reduces yeah. anything on that line. Right. There we go. So uh, the standard annual question is, why is playgrounds not considered a recreational function? The standard. Uh, and I mean, with the exception of we've always done it that way. That's, that's the rationale. standard answer that I've been given. Yeah, I know, but I'd like to have rationale. We've always done it that way. It's part of people uh, that, that live here year-round. have always enjoyed the playground, and they're, they're happy to support the playground. And every year it's brought up by you, and every year it's voted down. So we continue to keep it that way, and if you want to continue to bring it up every year, you're more than welcome to. Michelle, I'll note that the people who are living here year-round are incapable at this time of enjoying the playground. Well, this is the way they voted. Well, I'm trying to make a logic out of this. The playground is a piece that we own. Yes. No, the land, owned the, owned by the, state state the land is owned by the state of New Hampshire. We own the equipment and we manage the equipment. Also not true. Under real estate law, as you well know, I mean, any, any fixture firmly attached to a piece of real estate is owned by the person that owns that real estate. So all attachments to that real estate is owned by the landowner, which is in this case is the state of New Hampshire. I would make a point of order. Yeah. Not all fixtures attached to real estate. Permanently attached. Become, no, not all permanently attached fixtures become part of the realty, real estate. There are many examples in court and in general law where fixtures are removed upon sale. And that's just mm -hmm. the reality here. Although some might say that it would be a benefit if the state owned those fixtures. And they're not fixed. You could pull them out 
Yep. Within an hour. The only time that the description that Mr. Ladd is offering is when buyer and seller agree to remove the fictions. So in order to have it not be part of the real estate, it has to be removed. Oh. Until it is removed, it is part of the real estate. That's why buyers and sellers would have to agree. But in this case, buyers and sellers do not apply because there's no transaction taking place. And until such time that there is a, such a transaction and there is such an agreement, the fixtures are owned by the landowner, which is the state of New Hampshire. That's your opinion. That is any lawyer's opinion okay. that has any degree of honesty, which is extremely difficult to find these days. I acknowledge that. I assume you're inferring I am dishonest. <laughs> <laughs> no, all right. Let's no inference is let's, necessary. You know, Madam Chair, would point, you control him a little bit, please? I think we can all be ladies and gentlemen tonight, so this isn't a three-hour meeting. Um, I just wasn't clear on whether we owned that particular spot or not. No, we don't own no. it. Okay. No. And then that would have given. It. That the, state the direction I was going in is, is is mute because if we had owned that spot, then it would have belonged there. Now it's, I, I, I it's an expense. I don't think it matters on no, where it is. It's a mistake of our town fathers, nineteen thirty something, to get all that land. Yeah, that and I'm sure that there's some agreement between town and state somewhere that doesn't address it correctly and leaves us in this situation but for the sake of a budget we'll move on I did want to ask you a question though last year how much I don't remember how much came out of the fund <coughs> I think it was 55 it was a little less than five thousand dollars and it closed out that particular capital reserve and all of that plus the 28888 was used for the playground yes I like to point things like that out mm -hmm. because it looks like oh well how come you only spent 288 and I'd like the minutes to reflect that, Joan, because we forget year to year to year. And okay, I want to explain. When we had our annual meeting last year, mm -hmm. the we had uh, the Warren article to close that particular um, capital reserve, and there was whatever money was in there. I think it was like forty, might have been four thousand eight hundred and ninety and some change. So we closed it out and applied the money to the playground maintenance. We guaranteed at the meeting last year that because somebody asked, they wanted to make a motion to remove the money from the budget since, it, since the article had passed. And we, we stated fact that we would not double spend, that this money would not be spent, and it, was, and it wasn't. And it was put back for the taxpayers. Can okay. you repeat the number just for Joan? Do you think it was in the fund last year? The amount that was in the uh, the capital reserve, it was less than five thousand okay. dollars. The only point being is that as we've looked at some numbers this year and averaged it, them out, is that that creates an anomaly in there. Sure does. All right, that <coughs> as long as we have it in the notes to be able to go back and say, yeah, there was money spent there. All right. That's the only point there. All right. Any other questions going down this side of the room? No, I don't know. Also. Okay. Go to page four now. Mm -hmm. House and Recreation. Um, one of the biggest uh, expenditures is our uh, mass media entertainment, so our advertising. Um, feel that uh, we were kind of stagnant where we were at, um, that the cost of print mm -hmm. media, um, internet has been slowly climbing, and uh, John Kane is our media director, he's been doing a fantastic job with what we gave him, but this year we decided to up the budget a little. Uh, a lot of the, the items that we do every year have gone up, so we're at 140. His salary has stayed the same for the past nine years, I believe. I think it's 15. Yeah. Right. Well, well, you were getting zero for a while. Right. So. <laughs> um, and then we do the T-shirts the for all the... Um, I don't know why it's separated, though. Um, yeah. Would you like an explanation? Yeah, please. Okay. I, I remember you told me this already. So all right. Well, John's... 
his complete number when you when you compress this line, 4189.1, is 100. Last year it was 160,000. This year it's been raised by 10,000, so it's now it's 170,000. Now the reason that <coughs> I break out the sand event T-shirts <coughs> is that it's a sand sculpture. It's related to the sand sculpture, but John pays out of his meteor account. He pays for banners, he pays for advertising the sand sculpture event, and the t-shirts and paraphernalia that's given out to the volunteers, okay? And Not the volume, you mean the, the sand the, and sculptures? Sand sculptures, and also the ones, the t-shirts that are paid for, that are available for people to buy at, at Ashley's, okay. So at the end of the, after the event, Ashley's gives me a check, and I put it back in. The actual cost of the um, t-shirts and all of the various things that uh, are used and given out and sold is actually, it's more than $7,000. But this figure shows the an actual figure of what we ended up with after the sale of the t-shirts. And it's not broken out as a um, as an amount to be spent. There's, there's nothing there under 2015 that it'll come out of that 140,000 but I will put the actual numbers into the line so that we can keep track of of the sales and how they went last year we did very well I think we sold out <coughs> completely of all the um, t-shirts so all right, I'm getting that's the explanation so that that three thousand dollars is a subline of the 140 yes that that will end up that that three Three thousand dollars is actually going to come out of one hundred and forty thousand. Okay. Okay. And is that that's an expense? It's a it's an expense exactly. Okay. But the one hundred and forty thousand is still there, right? It's actually one hundred and forty plus another thirty, and that's one hundred and seventy thousand. That's what John will get okay. under forty five eighty nine one. Okay. The easier way to look at it is you add the one twenty six and the three thousand, you come up with the one forty. Add the line A and C together. Well, the line no, right. column D. You add 126939 and 3060.50 and 3060.50, and you come down 40,000. 130. 130. 130. Right, exactly. You follow that? Yeah. Okay. Okay, now that's good. Okay, entertainment. That's our concert series, a talent competition. Um, classes have gone up. Uh -oh. And we have decided that the week after the 4th of July, if you're a beach person, you, you know we get this big rise for the 4th, and then we get a real quick dip, and then it, then it levels out to busy. So we've decided that we wanted to up some of the concerts, maybe track some named group or someone that's going to draw more people for those days that, that the beach takes a little bit of a dip. So that, that's one of the reasons we went up. Plus, a lot of the concert, a lot of the entertainments, uh, entertainers have gone up. So, um, Glenn's been working with the similar budget for a few years, and now uh, we feel that it's time to do that. Um, the talent competition, we went up a little on the prizes, so we could get um, more people interested. So that's why that's going up. Parking lot payroll. Um, much where in 2013 the actual was pretty much nothing because we didn't have a parking lot. Um, we, we budgeted 30,000 from 2000 from our figures from 2012, uh, and we were pretty close to that budget. It depends on the shows in the casino and preseason and postseason. Um, this year it was pretty slack in preseason; they didn't have a lot of shows, so we didn't have the lot open as much. Um, so this year we're hoping there'll be more shows. And We'll, have, we'll make more money because they're open more. Um, obviously, supplies and improvements. Um, we budgeted at 2000 I don't what, what was the reason we were at 10 The shed. The shed. Oh, the shed, yeah. Okay. Lights. Fence. Fence. Right. So, fireworks, so contractual amounts. Uh, we, we, we have a set figure for how many shoots there are. If we are lucky and we have sun, sunny, warm days, and we don't have a rainstorm at night, um, those shoots go off. If we
we cancel them early enough, we don't have to pay for them. So that, so the contractual amount for the amount of shoots this year, there's extra shoots because of, we have an extra uh, Labor Day goes to the seventh this year. So we think we have an extra week in there. We upped Fourth of July a little bit to give it a bit of a bang. It was a little disappointed last year. So that that's why that is at sixty-two thousand. Actual could be less if we have rain days. That's what that. Okay, so when do they start, Chuck? They start mm -hmm. Memorial Day weekend. Memorial Day weekend, June seventeenth, and I'm just top of my head. Uh, then Sandcastle, um, June twenty fourth, and is there June thirty first? Uh, every Wednesday. Every, every Wednesday. Wednesday yeah. Yeah. Wherever. From that and then we on. have July first. We have a shoot, and then three days later, <coughs> a special shoot that Chuck was talking about. That is a bigger shoot, and that's for July fourth. And then we also have. Um, Later, baby. New Year's. And, then and New, New Year's. Year's, which is... Oh, and that was the other thing. New Year's, when we signed the three-year deal with the firework company, by signing the three-year deal, they gave us two New Year's for free. Right. Mm -hmm. um, by mm -hmm. doing the contract. This year is the third year, so we have to pay for that. So that's, that's why it's up there as well. Mm -hmm. um, Sand Sculpture event uh, has been a huge draw for the, for the, the Village District. Uh, and... Unfortunately, the cost of things have gone up. Uh, sand has gone up, and the removing of the sand, the placing of the sand, and getting quality people. He brings in people from all over, uh, all over the world. He's had people from India and Canada, Australia, and different places that have come in and uh, done the sand sculpture. So they brought in, uh, and they win prizes as well. Uh, then we do security with that. Then we have a contractor. What we do with the contractor is they get a percentage of all the uh, sponsorship. <coughs> so that has to be at a certain level. We're hoping that we, we spend that in full. That means we get a lot more in sponsorship money. He gets 15% of the sponsors that we get in. And then we have an event coordinator. This this is probably the, one of the toughest jobs hmm. in the summer. So this this couple weeks, this person has to make sure that volunteers are there, security is there, that the people are, are keeping an eye on this this property, off, off the, the sculptures on the beach, all the things going on, passing out the brochures. Where are the brochures? Where is this person parking? Where is that? And, 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 and you don't think it's a lot of work, but it's a lot of work. And Brian will tell you it's a lot of work. So. It's mind-boggling because someone has to be there, so if someone's not, you are. <coughs> yeah. Get a good team, though, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> well. You would think the commissioners should back you up. <laughs> they did? They did. Oh, good. They did. <laughs> they did. <laughs> okay, they so did. additional events and activities. We have an activities facilitator. Um, we have... Children's Week. When we do the Children's Week, we give money to uh, the Chamber of Commerce, and that was traditionally a little less money than that. And that at one of our yearly meetings, one of the uh, residents wanted to boost it and boost it up to ten thousand. And the Chamber the Chamber does the event for us. We pay for that event, um, and they also do their own thing with it as well. The biggest bang for the buck we have. There's our movie nights that we put on every week. We have a few other little events that we do, teas, and, and uh, we, we do uh, cookies and hot chocolate at New Year's and, and stuff. And, and, and that's helping the community. That's not helping any businesses down here because nobody's open. <laughs> but it's one thing that we feel when we do the, the New Year's shoot is that it's a great for, for Hampton and anybody that wants to come out. So we do stuff like that. Movie night, um, that was up a little bit because we had to buy some new equipment we bought, um, I don't know if you, anybody went down, we have like a screen that is the size of a small drive-in theater on the beach, it's fantastic. And when we first did it, we had to do it for other people. Yeah. Now there's a good three, four hundred people some nights down there, it was amazing. And it, again, it's free. So people come here and they're just amazed that they can do all the stuff that we offer for free. It's not free because the taxpayers are paying for it, but it's free. Um, <laughs> <laughs> not free, but nothing's for nothing, right, Mr. Jones? Not free, but it is free. I like that. 
it's free for the, for the, the guests. <laughs> so fortunately, uh, that's come down a little bit because we don't have that. We don't need a new we, uh, uh, projectors. Only a couple years old. The screen's a couple years old. Yeah, so we're, we're in good shape there. Um, we did a coloring book last year, and um, we're quite excited about that. We always talked about it on our meetings, so people kind of laugh about our coloring book because we're so excited about it. But the coloring book advertises all of the things that the Yemta Beach Village District sponsors, right. page by page. And the, it's paid for now. We have thousands of them. And um, the $50 is just, we, we bought tons of crayons, but we, $50, of, do we need more crayons? Mm -hmm. That's that's where it's at. So mm -hmm. it's not a big ticket. Um, Christmas parade, we did a float this year. It was the first year. We think ours was the best. We should have won. Um, we put money in for next year. I don't know if we'll do it, um, but it was it was fun. People liked it, and uh, the parade was just tying the village district with the community. Um, and it, I, think, I think it's a great plus for us and plus for the town. Blue Ocean Society. We um, they are a nonprofit group. I'm sure you know about them. They put on um, um, they show children all sorts of things about sea life and about conservation about Earth Day they have pickups and stuff like that so we uh, last year we voted in 2500 this year we put it in the actual budget um, the communication committee committee and visual check are they doing any of I don't mean to stop you but blue ocean are they doing any of the whale watches from our harbor I know they do them from a couple of the boats know. up in Rye Harbor. I think it's all Rye Harbor. That yeah. And it, maybe it's closer to the Alza Show. <coughs> Gee, it would I, be great if they had a few volunteers and some of the, the charters that go out over here because they do a wonderful job out there on whale watches. Yeah. But anyway, just... And what do they actually do up there in Rye? I don't know what... Um, the they relationship is with the boats themselves, but I've been on a couple out of Rye Harbor, um, Rye Harbor boats, where they go around and point out the different whales. They they've actually got them named and tagged, huh. and they're very. Having done multiple whale watches, they're they're very informative. They make it very interesting from what they know about. The I'll ask and see what they say about it. That's it. Yeah, I don't, like I said, I'm, I'm interjecting something there. I know everybody has their own businesses, but, and I don't know how their interaction is with the Rye Boat. Karen's has the environmentalist or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, I've been out on Karen's boat. Yeah. All right, just a thought. I just didn't know. Were we giving them money? I didn't know if there was a way to get them on some of our boats. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a good idea. Well, the one reason we want them to be successful mm -hmm. in the location they're at is it's a, it goes back where um, the state has promised not to have any type of commerce or any type of business on that end of the beach. I mean, on that side of the beach. They have, they are looking at the wording and saying it means one thing and we're saying it means another thing and it's mm -hmm. a little bit of a battle. And it's one of those things we would rather have this there and them to stick a retail operation that's going to compete against the rest of the beach. Yeah. So um, I think it's important to make sure that they're successful when they, they, they're going to stay there. So that, that that's one of the main reasons I think it's a great idea. And the kids love it. So. Mm -hmm. They're doing stuff with the local schools now. They have, in the winter they're open at different times where the kids come from schools. Uh, I think they do story hours on mm -hmm. Fridays. So it's not just the summer. You know, that's, 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 that's a, a good addition to the beach. Well, yeah, maybe down the road, you know, some insight from the state, they can build us a small aquarium that people would Well, there was talk of that at one point at the state park, but I don't think the state's going to give up anyway. We're lucky, they're lucky they got 380 square feet or whatever in that building. I don't think it's much bigger than that. Huh. Um, so the beautification. Beautification was also visual, it was also banners, there was flags that were up on the, the boulevard. Um, there's a certain area that we've continued to have flags on. We've removed them off the boulevard. Since the state we did the front, they have those permanent flags. We, it, it was getting a little too busy with our flags on the other side. Um, 
So we haven't replaced those. We're not looking to replace those. The Unification Committee in the last couple of years have been unfunded, um, and they were at 5,273 last year. So we, uh, instead of being at 75, we brought it to 6,000. Why don't you put some of those up on Nashville? It's something we could talk to the town about if they wanted that too. So it could, it could be some some of that we could do. And, and there is room to do some of that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's worth a little time. <coughs> <about. coughs> so the, the Hampton Beach, um, those districts that support the Chamber of Commerce, we work tightly with them, together with them. Um, that money that's there, that 7000 they they may do a lot of mailers for us. They man the information center at, um, at the seashell. And that 7000 goes toward stamps, goes toward helping them run that office. It's something that we've always given them a certain percentage, and uh, we continue. They, they work well with us. We work well with them. Um, uh, the HBAC at one point they had uh, a need for some funds for uh, recorder. recording. Recording. And right now they don't need it. They have their own budget. Uh, but we have that line in there in case we ever have to add to it. Or, you know, so it's a dollar is put in as a. How about that line for the gala too? Well, the gala was a different. Yeah, we had something with the gala as well. Yeah. And but yeah, we did on the gala, gala as well. And that was voted on at our. Uh, Yearly meeting. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, cu I'm curious. So, in the Chamber of Commerce, seven thousand dollars, uh, they get all the benefits out of the, the event, right? What event? The Seafood Festival. Well, the Seafood Festival is something completely different. Okay, we don't, don't support see the that event. at all. That's their thing. Event. Yeah. Okay. So we don't we don't spend any money on the Seafood Festival. The seven thousand goes toward yeah. the mailers running the, the the office from May to. October, oh, yeah, and then and, then, and then what okay. they do is they they send people to the different hotels, the different businesses, and they give information and stuff like that. And you you're so, you're paying for it. We're not paying the whole thing. They have they have a huge budget. I'm not sure what their budget is, but we we have uh, this is something yeah, they're just marrying the booth and the state building. That's correct. Yeah. <coughs> Another question. Yeah. Is it, is there any way to determine on your your entertainment events, how much extra business it brings in? Because the scene of me, the events are really based on the weather. You know what I mean? Um, well, I can tell Is you. Uh, I'll let, I'm going to let John speak about our hits on our internet service and how many people are constantly. Uh, sending uh, sending questions, looking about when is the see, when is the sand sculpture event, when is this event? Is Children's Week the second week or the third week of August? Constant. That, that so these these events bring people. If you talk to myself, being a hotel owner, but you talk to Bobby Preston from Preston Real Estate or, or Tommy Higgins from Harris Real Estate, they'll tell you they get calls for each one of these events. And there's certain people that come every year, no matter what, for Children's Week, they've been coming. With the kids and now the grandkids come and they come for the same week. So, am I correct on this? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So we it is. I, I can't say that a, a sunny 85 degree day in in May and we have something going on. You know that that 70 percent of those people are going to be there for the weather. But there's might be 30 percent that are there because there's a concert at the seashore. Yeah. No, the reason I raised it is you know they got a lot of restaurants down the beach. On a rainy day, maybe if they advertise the discount, people would show up for the food. Yeah. Some some of them do do that. Yeah. yeah. No, Can we no, encourage that they do that? Uh, just to uh, name a, a couple, um, and th there's many more. Uh, yeah. I know yeah. Ron's, I've seen things, but you've got uh, Mama Leone's, I think they call it six before six. Yeah. No, I was and just ten, of, And mm -hmm. Forks has got ten for ten. So. The, yeah. Th they do that, and um, yeah, well, they like do that. it on an individual basis. So I'm suggesting that you know all the businesses <coughs> are on, on a rainy day if they cut their prices, people might show up. Um, I, I agree, and unfortunately, down here there's a lot of people that just do their thing and they don't really want to get involved and stuff. I'm sure you see that. So, so that's it on uh, culture and recreation. So, any more questions on that? Thank mm -hmm. you.
I just w I want to make a couple of comments, Chuck, yeah. for clarification. <coughs> Under the entertainment 4589-2, um, the concert series, could I might be wrong, so could you please correct me? Um, we went from 90,000 to 107,000. Did that, was the intention not to buy some speakers? Was that part of that amount? So the sound system that we were sound system. Yes, so. Okay, just to explain that. So it's not a seventeen thousand dollar increase no. for concerts. It's some money for some a uh, sound that system sense. and some additional shows. Yeah. Okay, <coughs> just so that everybody, because it, you know, you I see, a, they decided to get rid of Bose. We're not doing Bose. We're doing a different one, but but it's, it's, it's a, is it six thousand? I forget how much it was. It was it's six, 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 seven, six, yeah, around yeah. that. Yeah. But it wasn't Bose, you're right, Brian. It was another that other gentleman. The better system. John Jubchek. Yeah. Yeah, he had, I forget the and name. And then the other thing that I wanted to mention as well is that Space under sound, right? yeah under additional forty five eighty nine six additional act, events and activities we had budgeted um, yeah under movie night. Uh, C call and movie night and other events. We had budgeted seventy five hundred dollars. We ended up spending fourteen thousand three hundred and thirty nine and ninety seven cents because, in addition to, um, we had a coloring book that we hadn't you know that, that we didn't plan on. We did the Christmas parade, so we ended up actually spending over fourteen thousand in that movie movie night and other events. And other things, because it's sort of a miscellaneous. We didn't overspend the, the budget, as you can see. The bottom line, we were under, but there was some money, and we did it as we went along and made decisions. Or I didn't. The commissioners made decisions. We did not overspend. Now this year, if you look under that same um, C, D, and E, if you combine them, it actually comes out to uh, ninety-five fifty. 9,550 and that should cover I broke them out each line instead of compressing them so that we could keep a little better eye on what we're spending on what so it just as a little a um, little more detail <coughs> that's all I have to say thank you can I just say one thing of course I'm going around. this is your show so you um, <laughs> just to add what Sunny said, as far as the Chamber of Commerce, I've, I've been a member of a lot of chambers, but I've never seen a town build for an expense. There's a benefit, it's usually the Chamber. The, the Chamber is promoting it. I understand that. We benefit from it, but just on a go forward basis, you might want to look into that. I don't know how long you've been doing it, but I've, <coughs> I've never seen that before. Since the beginning of time, mm -hmm. for yeah, over no, 50 this, years, they really over 50, five zero years. So this Long this is goes to, I mean, they're they're mailing out our, our book every year, mm -hmm. so they they're they're storing stuff for us. This has always been part of what they've done. I mean, it, and it can always it could always be changed if the vote is one of it to be changed. Mm -hmm. But they do a lot of work for us. We we don't have a year round office. We don't have a seasonal office. We have our own homes. And I'll tell you, and John, the most I would say, has his house full of wood, <laughs> stuff, storage, and everything else. So this this seven thousand goes to them keeping an office for us uh, and working with us. So that the other way around, you know. I had this problem with the library. I was a library trustee, and they were paying them a thousand dollars a year to 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 be a member. The chamber should be paying the library, <laughs> and the chamber should be paying you. Well, you have to understand one thing, Sonny, and that is that we don't have an office anywhere. So when somebody oh, calls, they, they we, have we, have an, we have an 800 number, okay? We have a web page and we have an 800 number. If you have a question and you want to call and say, I, I want to get a room or something, whatever the question is, the chamber has 800 number. They're the ones that answer it for us, okay? They have people that they're paying that are answering that phone. And if you if they say we'll send you out our book, the one that we print, what how many copies? It's a ridiculous amount. Well, there's a couple different. A couple different, but we tens of thousands of books. They will put one of these in a in an envelope and put a stamp on it <coughs> and mail it for us. So so they're doing you know somebody's doing this clerical work. We're not doing it, so that's why we're paying them to help the to support. Okay, it's for support.
right, Chuck? Yeah, exactly. Okay. There's a huge amount of support too because they're doing everything from Canada. I mean, I've heard you know, they send out things to Canada. Um, anyone has a question, they have the answer. Well, they're the service organization. Well, right, yeah. but you know, on the other hand, somebody has to work there. Speaking of Canada, it's funny what they do now is instead of us spending two dollars and fifty cents on a book to mail to Canada, they have a whole bunch of books up there in Canada. We have someone that mails them out for us, so we're paying domestic rates, even though our books are up there. So they can't how'd you get them across the border? <laughs> I don't know. We haven't got John, any wish. I'll be happy if they pay the gas and get the helper up there. Yeah. <laughs> I think, uh, David, your question was more the, about the appropriateness of I've just never funding seen an it. external entity than it was about whether that entity is a bunch of good guys. Right. I, I think they're doing a lot of work. It's just normally the chamber pays for that kind of work. I, I've never seen a town charge for it. Some places don't have chambers. Uh, I'll give an example. Go up to Loon Mountain, they don't have a chamber. Go up to the Conway area, they don't have Because I've actually gone in. With, with your your thinking in mind, and going okay, who's doing this up at Loon Mountain? I worked at Loon as a ski instructor in college, and afterwards for about seven or eight years, so I'm very familiar with the area. And it was like White Mountain attractions, a different <coughs> organization completely. Um, and you know, we are a big recipient of what the Hampton Beach uh, Chamber of Commerce does. Um, you know, there's the area. There's nothing going on at Hampton Falls. Very little. I'm sorry. I'm apple <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I go out there and get my apples, and the food is wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, backtracking. Now, backtrack. but now it's we're not. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we we get thousands and thousands of people coming in asking crazy questions at the chamber. Uh, Brian, you, I've seen you in there. You've seen me in there. And I actually go behind the counter. Yeah, because there's one person there sometimes, sometimes there's two. There's a volunteer from the Granite States Ambassadors. He comes down and volunteers his time and helps out. But sometimes it's just like one person in there. And, and I'll go in there and go, hey, you know, um, uh, Susie, um, or Julie, do you need a break? You know, do you need to go upstairs and go back? You know, if they're standing there and there's thousands of dollars in there, you can't leave it closed and they, you don't want to close the door. So I'll go in there and spend a half an hour do the fat with them, answer all our questions. Um, they go up, take a little, you know, restroom break, come on down. <coughs> that, that's quite a bit. Um, and the, the people coming in, they, it's just not like they're not looking for a hotel room. They're asking just kind of basic questions. Get around. And there's, there's a bus coming in, and they and get a taxi. They ask everything. And so the number one question Where's the bathroom? Number two questions. <laughs> Number one question, how cold is the water? Mm. Constant. They have a big sign up there that tells you in the life of so. <laughs> They come in, they do it at 9, and then they do it at 1 again, and they update it. And, and we actually have it on our Bloody website. Season. That's all they I have a report that tells you the, the wind temperature, the, the water temperature, and the high tide. So there's, there's a lot more that goes into it. Uh, and, and service. And frankly, I don't. I, I think if the chamber didn't get that, I, I, I want to say that just the cost of running the summer is about twenty thousand dollars. That's not including mailings and shipping and everything else. If they didn't get that, I, I think they would leave the beach. It was the Hampton Beach Chamber of Commerce, the Hampton Area Chamber of Commerce. No, Hampton Beach Chamber of Commerce originally, then right. it became the Hampton right. Beach Area Chamber of Commerce. Right. Now it's the Hampton Area Chamber of Commerce. So it's not just a beach um, chamber of commerce, it's, a, it's a, a pretty much a regional chamber of commerce. Yeah. So um, they have an office uptown, they don't need to be down the beach. So I think if they had, a, if the expenses were much higher, I, I don't know if they would be there seasonally. So I, 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 we, we hope they stay there or we're going to have to take over. Then it'll be more than seven thousand. Yeah. I think I think Dave's question was really a principled one. I've just never seen it. Yeah. 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 And, and we do a lot. Of, Hampton does a lot of things that aren't conventional. Yeah, yeah. it's a unique situation. So I'm, I'm not saying it's not. It, it might cost more than seven thousand dollars to have to do it yourself. I'm, I'm just. 
<coughs> I think Chuck's number is um, pretty close to what it would cost. Yeah. Good. I think what's confusing to me is that you know, businesses depend on those kind of services. I mean, they've been going on for well over half. I'm not exaggerating when I say that. And the businesses have come to depend on uh, such services being done for them. And people can't imagine us no longer using compulsory taxpayer money to subsidize the local businesses, which is beyond the paradigm of anyone's imagination. That's, that's the reality of it. Are we going around the table now, Chair? Because I haven't had my question yet. Oh, okay. I thought you were in the middle one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was your imagination. Go ahead, Are sir. you done, Michael? I'm all done. All right. Go ahead, Jim. I have observed here in the uh, cultural and recreation side of the budget increases of 19%, 43%, 13%, 17%. See a couple of decreases of like amounts, but for the most part, it's on the upside of, of some significance. I noticed, for example, that um, before I go into what I've noticed. I do have a question that will illuminate another point from another meeting we had, unrelated to the VD. That's the you've you spent you're budgeting two thousand dollars for the Christmas break. You spent fourteen ninety two in the last year. Okay. Can you tell me a little bit about that expense that you actually realized last year? Well, a lot of the uh, the work for this year was donated. Mm -hmm. um, by the master sand sculpture, Red Gravy. Right. And his son, Red Gravy. We're not quite sure what we're going to do next year. So what, what is in this $1,500 last year? Like what was paid there? I mean, in general. I have, I have receipts. I have receipts. Greg had to go out and buy plywood. He had to buy Christmas lights. Everything he needed. Now, in addition to Greg donating all his time, uh, it should be mentioned that Lasad and company donated a trailer and they pulled it with one of their trucks. So, well, a lot of donations. As a matter of fact, the company well, that does. The donations, the one about the $1,500. Did that, that all go to. I have a have receipt. Question, simply. Did that all go towards to building materials for materials. building the floor? Materials for building the floor. That's all I wanted yes. to know. Okay. There you go. Right. Um, the, uh, I noticed also that the Blue, blue Ocean, we had. We gave them no subsidy last year. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. Well, the, oh, excuse me. We had nothing budgeted in the previous budget. All right. And we gave. All right, right now. What did we give them? Twenty-five hundred. Mm. Where was that in the budget? On the height? It was a warrant yeah. on the height. No, 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 no. It's it would have been it would have been well, maybe under. My eyes are failing me, but I it says actuals to twenty fourteen. It's in. Yeah, that was fine. Yeah. Because, because it came out of the movie night and other events line, okay. Not so only we put it in that we put it in its own line as well, it was it was voted on last year at that meeting. So we put it in its own line in case someone at any time during the yearly meeting wants to increase it, decrease it, remove mm -hmm. it, so it, it makes it easier. Didn't have its own subline in previous years. No, mm -hmm. no, it was so no. Was like under the magical other thing, right? No, other. But before that, other it, it, before yes. that, they had come in asking for it, and we we put it into the. the so it has a new line. Right. So right. last year. Yeah, thank you. Twenty five hundred dollars. Was it twenty five hundred dollars yes. last year? Mm -hmm. Security okay. equipment up seventeen okay. percent. What's uh, what kind of security problems are we having? We no longer have a building. It isn't about the building. Are we talking about the sand sculpture event? Yes. yes. That is a whole other thing. Brian, you want to enlighten so, him on security? Well, let, let me just say <laughs> on the, the security. Um, so it's about the events, basically. Yeah. Security is on the events. And, right. and what's curious to me is that all the events actually take place on state property. So we're actually paying for security on state property, aren't we? No, we're taking care of um, our event. Which is on state property. Well, even though it's our event. It's it's well, I acknowledge, I acknowledge event. that we are paying for an event. So you're going to have to do the security. 
You're going to have to be there 24 7. And wow. believe me, at 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning, and you get pretty hairy out there. <laughs> and you meet some people like Dave and others. I've been out there many nights. <clears throat> but it's it's paramount to that whole three weeks. It's just another it's just another example of of the overlap between the government entities here, isn't it? When it comes right down to it. I don't no, know. I don't, our, excuse me. My time, right. let me finish. No. When you're talking Easy. long. No, I am not. Easy to know. Easy. Yeah. I'm just going to add something in, into this and then right, both right, of you can speak. If you look at the beach as a venue, and basically we are the customer regardless of what we're paying for use or not paying, when you take on a venue <coughs> and you have a function, all the parts and pieces of the function belong to basically the customer, not the venue. And it doesn't matter whether it's a hotel or a beach. We're going to see more and more of this because now that they've come in and they've made the beach nice, you're going to see clamp. And I'm just saying this from experience of having worked with hotels and hotel industries and catering. You are going to see clamp aches on the beach that are going to be done by private concerns and so on and so forth. I just think, Tim, it would help if you looked at the beach as the venue and anybody using the venue is having to pay for the parts and pieces that go to it. The state is not going to give you anything other than the so venue I, itself. If, if you don't mind, I'd like to also point out that um, anytime someone has an event on the beach, they have a wedding, they rent the state park, exactly. they do anything like, like that, they pay fees to the state of New Hampshire. We, we're not paying the same fees that these people pay. We're not paying for each event that we run. We're not paying thousands of dollars. So right. because we're... Our fees are waived. Our fees are waived. And because we are taxpayer funded, they waive those fees. So we are basically renting the space or leasing the space or creating an event in the space, and they are not charging that where they charge, if you want to have a wedding on the beach, you're more than welcome to, but you're going to pay for it. If you want to have a function at the state park, where you rent the whole state park. All these road races and these, these runners that come in and the... And the Special uh, Olympics? Yeah, they pay. I mean, they pay for everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, we don't, we don't. So we pay a $200 fee. But to, to answer Mr. Jones, there is an overlapping. We prefer to call it a cooperation. Because without that cooperation between all of the entities, we wouldn't be able to have these things. That's where we need to use the venue. There, so there, there, is there seems to be some confusion. And maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe for you. Maybe, I'm, maybe for me. Because in my mind, I never asked the question. I made a statement of fact. You Fame. said there was overlapping. No, I said, well, I did say that in addition. I believe you in did. my yes. follow-up, yes. But my, my initial statement was that we're paying for security on state property where we're holding events on that state property. As far as I can tell, those are factually accurate statements. I don't know why everyone's uncomfortable with this no, mere statement of fact. I'm not, no, we're not uncomfortable. Well, I don't know why all this yeah, conversation, are, I really don't. All right, well, you're stating the fact, and yes, you're right, we are paying for security. <laughs> to protect our investment. Can I say oh, one, that, can I say one no, thing to That line item went up 17% for security on, on the state property relative to our event, and that was the nature of my, where I was beginning to ask my question, why did it go up? Um, costs have gone up, uh, hiring people have gone up, the dates, uh, there's a, a few additional days. Uh, we keep the sand sculptures up through um, July 7th. Through July 5th. So depending on when the 4th falls and depending on when we start the competition uh, will affect how many days that we actually... Prior to that in history, Jack, it was only, what, three, four days? Right. It was about a week. I think about a had, week, and yeah. now what are we at? Ten days? Three, three, three weeks. Right, three weeks. Three weeks. <laughs> Am I getting yeah. an accurate sense that most of the security is related to the Sandcastle, and the Sandcastle event has been extended, yes. and that's why the, that's why the increase? Yes. Yes. Thank you. That was easy. Actually, not all my questions are trick ones. Very yeah. few are actually. Believe it or not. Did you have a constant series of nineteen percent? Are we having? Uh, 
more concerts or are we paying something more per? Well, there is a few more concerts. Uh -huh. We're paying more for some of the items. We're also doing a sound system, equipment. which we talked about before. So it, it's it's relative to the amount of, of time that, that people are on stage. Uh -huh. uh, we also, um, I, I'm not sure. Was Do you know how many we're targeting? I think, was there 90 in the past? What, beers in the summer? There's 90 shows. 90 86. shows. 86. 86. 86 or so bands. But we also have um, an extra week this extra year week. at the end. Yeah. So okay. there's going to be. Maybe days late. Right. And you're going to upscale the entertainment in the dead the zone? The second part of. Plus the $6,000 in equipment, mm -hmm. roughly. Yeah. The uh, talent competition up 43%. Uh, that was Fridays. me. I'll be happy to explain that. Are to you part of the talent this year? I'm always part of the talent. Well, I mean, <laughs> on stage. <laughs> um, that too. Um, in discussing the the talent competition after I think it's ten years. What year are we in? Ten or eleven years. It, it, unlike the sand sculpture event, the talent competition really hasn't grown, and I want that to, to grow. I want it to become. Bigger. I wanted to have a wider circulation, so I discussed it with John about advertising and um, and and <coughs> raising the, the um, amount of prize money a little bit so that we can get more people interested. So, what are the pri what are the prize money? What is the prize? Is the is most of this increase related to prize money or advertising? I don't no, know. It's mostly I'm prize, sure. money. Yeah, prize money. Prize can you speak yeah. a little bit about the prizes? I mean, it's like. First place winner through tenth place winner, or Not first one, no, two, three, and then you got yeah, the senior, senior category, and then you have the junior categories. So first place winner in the senior and junior category, and one, two, three, and the no, it's it's one, two, three, in each of the categories. One, two, three, two, each of the categories. Okay. So how much? How much do, do they get? Right now, what is it? I think the top ten. Five hundred to one. <coughs> Five hundred to one. Thousand. Now? We went up no, no. What we, I, he said, what is it now? Well, was it? Well, what's it going to be? Yeah. It's oh, going to be a thousand. We're going to push it to a grand, I think. Thousand, thousand, five hundred, two fifty. Yeah. Yeah. Something. Yeah. Madam Chair, I have. When you're done with the round table, I have a procedural question uh, before we vote on this. Otherwise, I have no further questions. Thank you, Stephen. You had a question. For I had a comment for Tim. Yes, and and I have to tell you. I've forgotten what it was. <laughs> so there. So there you go. Sorry. I go to treasure No, we put that money. Never mind, Brian. Hold it down. We'll come back if you remember. Okay. Uh, Bob. I have no question. Mike. Jim. All set. All set. All right. Back to you for the procedural question. Madam Chair, I noticed uh, as I was looking at the uh, the, the warrants for the VD that is proposing uh, under Article 3. Can we get to the warrants after we finish the budget? Excuse me. I'm just asking you a question. Okay. Well, I, am I know you don't like to be interrupted, but... I just remembered but the that. hell right. Very sorry. Yeah. So, Madam Chair, I noticed that in Article 3, there is the issue of uh, whether or not to uh, add recreation to the purpose of the village district which I guess raises the question in my mind, I guess that we don't have that as a legal basis right now, and yet this particular side of the budget we're about to vote on is purporting to spend money for that very purpose. So I would suggest that maybe we could simply table the discussion, or rather the vote on this, until after we get done discussing the warrant articles. And so that's my suggestion in terms of procedure. Okay, and... Give me a minute for my can I can I just comment then to Tim? Yes. I remembered what I was going to tell him. Okay. <laughs> Under the when when Maybe he was asking plans. about he was asking about security and equipment and a 17 percent increase. We have um, three weeks or 21 days or how many days it is. We have a shift, two shifts during the night. It starts at nine o'clock and it goes until six o'clock in the morning. <coughs> and the security is not. Uh, we're not hiring a policeman. <coughs> We're hiring security to keep people from molesting um, the sand sculpture. 
And there was a couple of years ago, two or three so, years ago. Say, say, just so you know, the question I asked was fully satisfied to my... Okay, well, I just wanted to make sure that you understood. We pay so much an hour, times so many hours, times so many days, and that's where the number comes from. Yes. I yeah. And it expanded quite a bit from the beginning, so yes. thus, that's yeah. what we're looking at. I do have one more question, actually, if I may. If I may. Well, Mike, you might as well. We all have the ball done this. Oh, but the only thing is, is that we've got a question going on right here when we're about to vote. Oh, the, I, this question itself. can, if you're thinking about that, I can ask the question. I'll get a response right away. Historically, when we have these meetings at the beach, from what I understand, there's lobster dinner involved. I don't see lobster dinner here tonight. What are you talking about? I, want to, I <laughs> missed that. <laughs> when the budget committee used to come down to the beach years ago, years ago, to do the precinct budget, they were entertained with a little bit of food. And I'm we did. Wondering, I'm wondering where it is. Well, we were here two weeks ago, and we ate. We ate. You mean when we do our budget? Yeah. Oh, well, we, we didn't have, we didn't have lobster, believe me. We had some things. <laughs> well, I'm not talking about the budget. Oh, you know, the budget committee did that. No, when it came down to approve the budget. Oh. That happened years ago. Well, I think we had pizza this year. Okay. Probably too young. We did the budget ourselves, though. We're too young to remember. I hate to bring it back to this. The answer is we got rid of that. Do remember that we have asked Tim to actually run the dialogue later, so I don't know. Let's move on. Okay. All right. Um, I think I'm going to say on this, Tim, that we'll go through the budget as it is and then take the more out of the separate. Mm. I don't see anything in the budget that had not been there prior to. And then we'll have some explanation on the board. Well, I would just summarize on the budget before we take the vote, very briefly, mm -hmm. that the <coughs> existence of Article 3 is, in fact, a virtual billboard proclaiming that recreation has never been authorized to be a proper expenditure in the village district. Otherwise, they wouldn't be asking to add it. And since it does not exist by their own admission. I can't see how I can vote for any money that would spend money on something that they are not legally authorized to spend money on. And that's all I have to say, Madam Chair. If you'd like, Madam Chair, I can answer his question. That's not a question, it was a statement. It was well, a statement. I, I would, would you like to add I would like to, to make a statement about his statement. <laughs> <laughs> then I may fall off making a statement. <laughs> The Village District has been engaged in the entertainment business since 1939. Prior to 1939, it, under Chapter 57, it had adopted first four and then the sixth authorized activities a Village District could enter into. In 1927, the District pr proposed spending a couple hundred bucks for band concerts but it was determined they did not have the legal authority to spend that money under the then Chapter 57 authorization. So the district s sponsored and supported an amendment to Chapter 50 setting, 57, adding Section 6, which authorized recreation promotional activities to be conducted by a village district. In 1957, this Chapter 57 was repealed and Chapter 52 replaced it. Chapter 52, colon 1, subsection 6, authorizes a recreational promotional activities by a village district. And as a cameo, as the result of the 1939 authorization, the village district appropriated $3,000 of a $15,000 budget to buy folders to promote Hampton Beach at the New York World's Fair. This is not something that's new or novel. <coughs> this is just something the attorney suggested for housekeeping purposes because the records are not kept going back to the 1930s. Further, 
this activity has gone on so long it is grandfathered, but there's no need for this grandfather because it was originally authorized. So in summary, this is, Article 3 is an attempt by the attorney yeah, it's a house precinct to, to clean it up. Yes, so to place in a permanent record something that through the years has become other than a permanent record. And if anyone wants to uh, inquire of what I've just said, I would suggest you read Peter E. Randall's book, Hampton and Hampton Beach, 1888 to 1988. Start around page 152 <laughs> and this stuff will be in there for you. <coughs> You know, it's it's fascinating that uh, someone with a legal mind would reference a history book in which it was never enacted in law. While I'm sitting here looking at the law itself, in the Article 52 that the gentleman refers to, it clearly says, and I quote, village districts and precincts established under the laws heretofore in force may adopt the provisions of this chapter. Mm -hmm. But it goes on to explain that if it chooses not to, it will continue to function under the laws in which it was created. So, the chapter 52, that, or chapter 57 that was spoken of, while it has been uh, grandfathered, shall we say, is in fact still applicable to any village district that does not adopt 52. And there is no record, and there has been many years of searching for such records that Chapter 52 was adopted. The the concept that that uh, uh, you know it's been what we're doing is we've always done it that way, and thus it's grandfathered. Is is like uh, something very interesting from you know I don't know I suppose any crook would say that. I've been stealing money all my life and I never got caught. Now that you caught me, you can't send me to jail for it. Is that in chapter Because I've been grandfathered. No, no that's in Jay Randall's history book. All right. All right. I, I hope that no one voted I, on or adopted I this law. Believe, my dad. I do believe in fairness. Everyone has said us a little bit on this and you'll have to vote the <laughs> conference on it one way or the other. So for that, I don't think I see anybody else with Anything to add to this, Bob? Do you want to move this amount? Yeah, I will move the budget and the amount of five hundred and sixty-three thousand three hundred thirty-seven dollars. And it was seconded. All right. Let's put that to a vote. All those in favor? Opposed? Right. Oh, I definitely am in favor of it, but um, just for legal reasons, I'll abstain. Madam Chair, point of order: as a as the treasurer of the village district, mm -hmm. and as a paid employee of the district, because I get paid just as the commissioners do. Um, I think we discussed this last year, but I want to make sure, for the record, um, because I just voted, I did not abstain, okay? And I believe that we discussed this last year, and you were of the opinion that I did not need to abstain. Is that, am I correct? I told you didn't have to abstain. As you look at selectmen, selectmen get paid for what they do, and they vote. So if I'm wrong, I am sure somebody will come back and correct us. Okay. I just, right. just wanted to make that but point. But in, in light of the fact that both we have representatives from both um, the school board and from the board of selectmen, and those positions are paid positions, um, and they do have a vote, in the same light, you gentlemen have a vote as well. That is what I was told to my knowledge. Like I say, if there'll be a correction, we'll stand corrected, but last year that went one way and this year. <coughs> Madam Chair, there is no legal prohibition uh, on this matter, and it's really a matter of individual ethics. And, and so it's fine that one member has a different, perhaps higher so standard of ethics than another. We, we have so what? So People on are that, individuals. All right, so on that vote again, all those in favor? Brian, you want to vote in favor? Okay. A higher he wants. Standard. He wants to stand up. Okay. And 
No. Oh, no. Opposed? Okay. Adamantly, no. If you have an adamantly no, put me there. And abstain. <laughs> Brian? I will abstain and vote for it at the meeting. Okay. Thank you, dear. <laughs> All right. Moving on to income. <laughs> Forward on, on the taxes. I think the taxes equal what the other income doesn't. Um, That's for if you if you would allow me, uh, Mr. Sure. Chairman, I have to make a correction because when I went online to file the for the DRAs MS 737, you can't file it unless those that certain numbers agree with each other. The property taxes line 3,000 actually needs to be. 422,887 so that then the subtotal equals the amount of expense so it's and it will be fixed it'll be fixed for our annual meeting it's just something that I discovered on Sunday a Saturday night when I was filing the forms with the DRA so that I'd have them ready for this meeting so what line are we needing to change? So On page 6, line 3,000 property taxes should say $422,887, and that would bring the subtotal of the Commissioner's proposed budget to be $563,337. Okay. Steve, does the town break out property taxes for businesses or oil? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. And oh. in order for in order for the <coughs> to do the audit that we just finished, we just finished the audit, um, the actual amount the, is broken out for the exempt, which the exempt portion of the budget is the general government, and then the non-exempt, which is the culture and recreation. But the uh, exempt, I think, was ten cents per thousand this past year, and then the non-exempt was about fifty cents per thousand. Okay, but that's all broken out with the DRA when they set the tax rate in September. Okay. Can you repeat those numbers again? <clears throat> three thousand line three thousand property taxes should be four hundred and twenty-two thousand eight hundred and eighty-seven, which would make the subtotal then. Five hundred and sixty three thousand three hundred and thirty seven. Which will match the figure that is, just is the expense, exactly. And that will be fixed for the annual meeting. In the book, the actual printed book. Okay. And it has been already fixed, I already fixed it for the actual MS thirty seven uh, seven thirty seven it's called now, the electronic version that I'll be please asking all of the budget committee members to sign before they leave tonight so that I can file this legally. Please. You can have confidence in that, Dave. If you've never been to a village district annual meeting, you'll have to go. And you will see the fix is always in. Moving on. Okay. I mean, I, I'd like to take offense to that. Never before, and I've been on this board for quite a few years, has the ethics been as high on this board? Full disclosure, it has never been that good. It has never been that honest. And you were pretty close to people who were a little in the shade side. But you weren't aware of that because maybe you weren't as involved. But let me tell you, we have, I am, I'm proud to be on this board. As far as the fix is in, I think the problem is because they turn you down, you think it's fixed. No, we don't agree with you. It's quite simple. So, you know, I, I think that's a little harsh. I just thought I'd say that. I'm still a little confused how you did this thing, Steve. How did you manage to move it up to 422? Okay, so 877. Because it has to, the bottom line is, Mike, is the subtotal has to equal, the revenue has to equal the expense. Okay, okay? I got that. So I simply change, well, the one thing that I can change or it, that can change is the property taxes. Now, understand mm -hmm. the parking lot revenue. This is a pro, this is just an a pro, uh, pro, Approximation. Approximation, okay, the revenue. And that, as you well know, is, has, having been a selectman, these numbers don't mean a thing, this revenue, until next September when the real numbers are in. Right. And we'll have, the, we'll have how, whatever the parking lot, uh, parking lot revenue, the sand sculpture total, 
that's when we'll set the tax rate, and that's when we'll know how much money we need for the property taxes. I have no problem so with all that. I'm trying to figure out where you got the 422. I simply did so arithmetic. If you add, Just if arithmetic. You add the other income estimates, you have to subtract. Subtract them from the 563,337, oh, oh, and then you end up with that. Okay, I got yeah. now. I'm all set. Then okay. you're working backwards and you're hoping that your property taxes It's going to get fixed. Don't worry about it. If I look at that a little further, I, and I guess it must have been asked for Stephen, um, the balance of that checking account is pretty hefty, which, uh, which is nice. And most towns don't have that kind of... Uh, and it's also necessary. It is necessary because our, our, the money we spend all comes now. We're going to be spending a lot of money now. Yeah, Chuck, for new people, we have some new people mm -hmm. here. If you could just explain how you accumulated that, because you're right, you put the money out now and collect it back with severe expenses, and that was actually engineered over a number of yeah. years to be I, able I to do I could explain that, that well, as treasurer, as that? treasurer, because what happened is that I had to sign an agreement with the town treasurer, okay, and we only just did this a few years ago, because up until then, it was sort of... Uh, nothing, well that's a one way to describe it, but it wasn't in writing. We have an actual agreement. Now what happens is that I work with the town and the treasurer so that for one thing, they, the town of Hampton doesn't have to go out and borrow money to pay me. They have to, they have to pay the school every month an mm -hmm. X amount of money. The way I've worked it out with the town is that we get 30% um, of what we need in first of June, 30 percent in July, and another 30 percent in August. The 10 percent remainder, which of course can float around be depending on what the tax rate is set at, I get in December. And as well, <coughs> if in June I, I actually work with the town treasurer, and if, if they, they don't, the tax bills don't go out until sometime in June, and they usually, um, the, whatever the deadline is, Rather than, I've talked to her, rather than the town going out and borrowing money, I'll actually say to her, okay, give me the check, which they have to do just because of the way we've written up our agreement, but I won't cash it until July. I'll just hold the check so they don't have to go out and borrow money. Mm -hmm. Try to work, because it's your money. It's my money, it's your money. Why go out and borrow money to, uh, you know, and I need that amount of money right away because we start spending money fast mm -hmm. at the beginning, mm -hmm. okay? Because all our events are going to happen during the summer, and we have to pay bans, and we have to put uh, deposits on fireworks. We have to, all of these contracts have to be signed ahead of time mm -hmm. and money paid, right, before the event. So that's, that's the reason why we have quite a good number in the checking account at this time. But I can tell you right now, that was as of two, uh, February 12th, and it's not that amount now, because I've been writing some pretty hefty checks recently, and it's less than. I'll, I'll update that number for the actual annual meeting. Okay. So, so it will be a little closer. Change, you want to change that number in this meeting, right? Do I have that right? No, that number is going to stand as it is. That's the number as of February 12th. We can't that. Okay. So we're not making a motion to change that. You don't no. need to approve that, do you? Huh? The checkbook. That's uh, as I read it. Every time I write a check, it changes. So you know what the price is stable. Right. Mary Louise actually a asked me to put that in there. You might remember last year. So there it is. So I mean, Madam Chair, we do have income on our agenda, right? No. Part of the budget. What? Yeah, we do have that as part of it. Um, so do we want to ignore this page? Is that what I'm hearing? No. No. So do we want to vote on a page so that we know that's an error, Steve, Steve but would we you want have to correct any problem with correcting it? I would not have any problem at all correcting that number if I knew what it was. <laughs> but as I said, every t it changes every time I write a check. So that's that was accurate no, as of four ninety. The income up here. Oh. Just the income number. Oh, okay. You need a motion to. Yeah, clean. Well, that's what I'm asking. That, yeah, yeah. Clean Please go ahead. Do make a motion, Tim. I'll make a motion. <laughs> Somebody. I'll specify the motion to change line uh, three thousand to read four hundred twenty-two thousand eight eight nine. Eight eight seven. Eight eight seven. Eight seven. And. And subtotal. And the subtotal, Tim. 
And the subtotal case? Well, you're doing 63337. Five six three 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 seven. Thank you. You're welcome. Five six three. Okay. So who was the yeah. second on that? Me. All right, Steve. What is the? You got minus nine percent on that line now. Uh, what's, it's obviously a plus now. It's right? going to be a different number. Yes. It'll be there. I'm not this concerned. Just You're cross out. That up. Cross out the nine percent. It'll be different. The numbers are correct. All right. Yeah. Well, what I'm what I'm observing here is that this there will be a tax increase. No, not especially, Tim. Uh, not necessarily mean a tax rate increase. Uh, there may not be a tax increase. You might notice that last year we budgeted $90,000 for the parking lot, yet we brought in almost $50 shy of 140 Now, I don't see why this coming summer, if we have a nice summer, and we have the same management that we had this past year, um, managing that property, that parking lot, it should be a lot more than $110,000, but we, you know, rather than error on the higher side, if they will have a rainy summer or something, so, um, but when that number changes, the 422.87 is going to go down, you right. see, if we have a, and, and if we add that additional parking lot as well, that if number, it rains all summer, it'll actually go up. <laughs> Uh, that well, is, that's, in, yeah. that's <laughs> a, that, that would be a true statement if it rained all summer. And right. if the world ends, it will come down. Right. You know. Okay. It's already Good. been made. All those in favor? Opposed? Was that opposed or just? No. Yeah, they, they were in favor, but okay. you pushed right along. All right. <laughs> and no abstentions, right? Okay. You abstain? Okay. Now we'll get some. Okay. All right. So we've moved yeah. past that. All right. Okay. So now we take the out of this. So, you made the so the point of 90 is in your personal hmm. checking out, huh? <laughs> no, it isn't, Mike. No, the 563. <laughs> Troublemaker. No, the one dollar in the other. The no, one dollar. <laughs> All right. Now we're going to move on to. Warren articles. Yeah, Warren articles. All right. Do you have copies of those? You have a copy, Mike. If you don't, I'll give you another one. <laughs> you don't. Who doesn't have a copy? Oh, yeah, I have another sheet in here. Never mind. Yeah. What's that? Thank you. Do you want me to move yeah. on to two? Well, you know what? Actually, being the budget committee, we only need to talk about the ones that involve money. Correct. So, if you would move <coughs> discussion. Okay. I'll move Article 2 as printed in the warrant. Do you want me to read it in its entirety? No, we don't. No, we don't need that. We've, we've all read okay. it, unless there's somebody um, who hasn't read it, but I would like it explained. Okay, um, Article 2 is about four lots that are uh, well, part of the cruise property, the cruise property was, where we are looking to purchase that property and create a parking lot to continue providing parking for people in the village district as well as to bring in income in the village district. And one of the problems we have here is there's a lack of convenient park. There's a lack of nice park, good park. And um, there's been studies saying we don't need a lot of parking, but anybody that's down here knows we need parking. Um, by having a, a parking lot on the north side of the beach, we're able to service a lot of the businesses, their employees. We help some of the employees with lower costs on some of the days. Uh, not all the days, but we help them out. Uh, overnight parking for people staying in hotels where the hotel maybe has one car per unit and the people have two cars. Uh, and it's obviously it's become profitable for the village district, but it's also helping the businesses in the village district. Uh, too many parking lots have disappeared. There's new buildings going up and there's not new parking lots to replace them. So we feel as an investment in the village district by buying this lot, creating parking. At some stage, it could be turned into a senior center if the village district voters wanted it. It could be turned into anything if the village district people wanted it or if they decide they want to sell it. The property price is, you have the, uh, yeah, yeah. It was the assessed value of the, of the property there and 
what we agreed upon. Nine hundred and sixty thousand dollars. Is that the exact? Yes. Okay, Nine hundred and sixty thousand dollars with additional um, monies put in to bring it to a million dollars to tear down the buildings and to put crushed stone and some type of fencing around the property to create a parking lot. It, it, you need to understand that, um, I, well, I, I, uh, I think, and I know the other commissioners think that it's, it's, a, it's, it's a good value that you do not see four lots on Hampton Beach that are together ever come for sale. So at some stage, if we find that this isn't working and the voters decide that they want to do something, we can sell it and we would not be losing any money. Uh, this lot, <coughs> by taking a bond out, will pay for itself. It has been mentioned by somebody before that why do we think that we're better off at running a parking lot than a private person? Well, we're not in it to make a living off the parking lot. We're in it to pay for the parking lot and to create a service for the people in the village district. Okay. I'm going to start down this end for a change. <laughs> Glenn? Um, um, no questions. I don't have any questions. I think it's a great idea. I would agree. I have no questions. I I'm fully support it. I'm all set. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that worked well. Huh? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to vote for this for some reasons, but I feel bound to add a little bit of caution here that I feel. First of all, having been in the food industry, and you guys all know that, the that end of the beach is locked. There are a lot of businesses down there who don't have parking. It's, it's, it's too far away, and it hurts them, and it hurts the development of that end of the beach. And you're right, my children have both worked on this beach. They've both had to walk long distances at night to the parking lots. And, and quite honestly, for safety concerns, sometimes it would be nice to have another lot down there. Um, I couldn't in conscience vote against this because I quite honestly wondered why the town didn't buy the San L building now that it, when it went back up for sale uptown, and that would have solved the whole problem of parking in downtown. You could have ripped that building down and put up a parking lot. So I guess in that light, that's what you're looking to do here. The problem I have is that I think it'll be very successful as a parking lot, and I don't wish to see the precinct or the town, for that matter, get into the habit of buying up parcels to offer them for sale or, or basically get in the real estate business down the road. I would suspect that there are some that have come out with that problem themselves in, in looking at the whole thing. So as I've done many times, I'm for this article as it is for a parking lot. Um, would not be as happy to see it not be parking lot in the near in the near future let's put it that way in, in years probably a couple of decades as far as I'm concerned give the businesses down that end of you know a chance to thrive for what they've <coughs> been deprived while everything else has been built up and then that would be functional and I, I don't know if you'll get the revenue out of that lot like you do in this lot but I think you could probably come out with enough to to pay for it or at least have it be a service enough to get close to it. So I am for it, but I just felt I had to add that other side to it as just a caution. Thank you. Tim? Um, it's question time, right? It is. Not statement time? But question time? But okay. I want to be sure. I, I just restrict myself to questions. That's all we're doing. We're just ladies and gentlemen, so you ask what you want. All right. Say what state. I want. Well, well state, you can make a statement too, but just civility is a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. Get on with it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right. I see on <coughs> on this article, Len, on the 
bottom, you will see that it says this passage of this article is contingent <coughs> on the passage of one Article 3. To formally add maintenance of activities for recreational purposes to the list of approved purposes of the district. So my question is to the uh, HBVD channel, why would you place a contingency on a warrant article that as we are being told is merely a housekeeping warrant article? Why would you risk the bond warrant article in such a fashion by putting that contingency in there? The, it's on advice that question was directed to the yeah. chairman of the Hampton Beach Village District Manager. Okay. I'm going to pass it on to one of my uh, other commissioners. Well, in that I case, know. I can only conclude that the chairman has no answer, and I I'll just proceed. said I didn't know. Well, and then I'll Tim? proceed. Tim, I yeah. asked the uh, chairman; he didn't have an answer, and that's an answer, okay. and I appreciate it. Thank Madam you Chairman, will you ask him to be civil and I stop being civil? All right, <coughs> all of you, for one minute. Tim, you asked a question, well, and if there's, someone, my answer. if there's someone in the room who can give you an answer, because I know that this went at great length with counsel, all right? There's someone in Madam this Chair, room. Madam Chair, I directed my question Do you to not want a specific to person, question? and I got the answer that I wanted to hear, because that was his honest answer. Now I'd like to continue. But he is not the only commissioner. So you didn't want the answer, then? You didn't want the answer? No, no, I wanted the answer. No, you didn't want the answer. Wanted the he pointed problem. out the resource to give you the answer, but you don't want the answer, so you just wanted to ask the question. Well, let's move on. Please. Draw what conclusions you wish. I asked a question, and the gentleman answered. Do you want the answer to the question? He answered me. He pointed to a resource to give you the answer. Right, which is the answer. Bob. So now it's for me to follow up. Right. Madam Chair, I have, I have once again. One minute, Jim. Please. Yeah. Bob, will you part of the negotiations with the attorney on this particular issue? We were all looped in. You were all looped in? Yeah. Okay. Um, I can only assume that your expertise in, in law, that there's something else. Is there something else to add to this? No. It, this, as I stated earlier, A, it's not really a budget monetary issue. This is a legal housekeeping issue. I'm not sure it belongs here at all. But counsel said to do it in this fashion so that we would have a historically current record what of historically has occurred over the generations. But I think what Tim was getting at, by doing this as a housekeeping but tying it to Article 3, you put this article in jeopardy. Well, Should Article 3 this not fail? Upon counsel and right. our council stated this is the way it should be presented. And DRA. And DRA. So, so we have notice. three legal authorities for, for doing it this way. So you, you will be advising people who want Article 2 to also <coughs> want Article yeah. 3 because it's going to clean it up and that's yeah. what DRA yeah. said. This will all be brought out at the meeting. Okay. Is that, that answer good enough for you, Tim? Do you have any other questions? It is my observation that to characterize Article 3 as merely housekeeping and then put it as a contingency on a million dollar bond, that it can't possibly be mere housekeeping. There's something far more significant here than simply housekeeping. Well, now, I raise this point because although it's been mentioned that three legal minds have actually said we really need to do this. But there have been citizens in this village district that for 15 years or more have been pointing out this flaw and it was okay to just ignore it because, well, he didn't have a legal mind. Okay. But now that you need a bond and you have to go through that filter and the legal minds say, wait a minute, we might not be able to get through that filter unless we pass this. So let's just call it a housekeeping article so everyone can feel warm and fuzzy about just doing the bureaucratic checkoff. Okay, okay, okay. That's what's taking place here. This is not a housekeeping warrant article. 
If it were, it wouldn't be contingent on something such as important as a million dollar bond. <coughs> now, back to the specifics of this Article 2. We've heard comments, we've heard comments about uh, getting some more uh, business uh, support down on this end of the beach. Which of course suggests that you know we haven't been supporting our businesses ge with geographic equity. And our poor businesses, they're not getting sufficient subsidies and welfare. Let's distribute it more evenly. I can certainly understand this statement. But I want to point out something. You know, we are allegedly a budget committee for the town of Hampton, and those of us who are elected are elected by those who are the townspeople of Hampton. Well, I, I'd like to make a comment on that. No, you cannot. Well, I, not I can and I will. This is my house. No, um, this is our yeah, meeting. This is our meeting. Madam Chair, are you yielding? Madam Chair, can you pound yes. the gavel? Let's stop this yeah. right now. Yes. Tim, I'm going to ask you. Rec have the chairman recognize you before you speak. Thank you very well. Thank I, the point is, I, uh -huh. I, go I anyway. get frustrated with this nonsense. Uh, we were all elected, and we were some of us were opposed to <coughs> by other people, unlike the people who were elected right. without anybody. So let's, I think we need to stop. Let's not right. I'm let's stop. I'm going to ask everybody to really stop what's right. going on here. Uh, okay? It's right I'm, over I'm, here. I'm, I'm saying stop I'm, it right over there. I'm saying on, on both ends, okay? And we know we're down the beach, but quite honestly, this is the budget hearing. That's correct. And I, I if everybody... Madam Chair, I was trying to a point, if I may continue. Well, Tim, we we hear what you're saying. We haven't heard sum it. Yet. Well, sum it up because That's this what is I was getting out of control. To do. I'm simply reminding my fellow budget committee members that we are here to serve the town of Hampton, and that this Warren article represents a simple fact that's also undeniable: that when the village district takes ownership of this property there will no longer be any tax revenue coming in to the town of Hampton. So in effect, the town of Hampton is sacrificing property taxes on this property the moment the village district buys it. So the town of Hampton is subsidizing this activity to the tune of something over fifteen to close to a twenty thousand dollars every year. And this is part of the problem when government gets involved and doesn't let the private sector get involved. Because, as I understood from the meeting that we had at the village district, the, this property never went on the market. It was directly delivered to the chairman well, to say, would you like to buy this at appraised value? And he said, that's very interesting. Let me look into it. So it was never put on the open market. The private sector never had an opportunity to buy, into, to buy it. And if the private sector did buy it, of course, they would be paying taxes in addition to paying the town a fee for having a parking lot. All right. So the town of Hampton is suffering as a result of this warrant out. I, I want you all to be aware I of that. I would say this. And Madam Chair, that's all I have to say. Okay, then I'm going to add something to that. While we would be losing tax revenue from a real estate standpoint, you currently pay what percentage? 20% of your parking lot revenues to yes. recreation? All is not lost. So I will add that. No, we don't do that. Don't you don't do that? We, no. we the lost town it. does it. The town used to give it to us. We lost it. But the right. town we went into recreation of Okay, so you're not paying that. Right. We so we nothing back. Back. So, so all it is lost. We don't pay the town anything. Okay, so you're not paying the town. Okay, no. well, then I stand corrected on that one. Moving yeah. on to you're Mike. Yes. Yeah. I'm going to uh, talk about that because as a budget committee, a uh, member elected by a legislative body, I represent the town of Hampton, all people of Hampton. And what this does, it takes a piece of property, it's currently worth about a million dollars, and if it was put in the open market, and if somebody like one of the contractors, construction companies, happened to make condos out of it, it would be worth at least $10 million. At least, probably two or three times that much. And therefore, the town would be getting significant taxes from that chunk of change. More than the village district will ever make from a parking lot because they think they need one to south in. That's the way I look at this. You're going to cost the town of Hampton a significant amount of money so you can make a little bit of pocket change. I think that's a very unrealistic way to look at business. 
And putting that aside, I don't like the way that it's attached to Article 3. I'm not saying I agree entirely with Mr. Jones' approach, but however, when we've done all this research in the last few years, I was given all the documents that the town had and supposedly the village district had that never indicated they adopted Article 52. So based on that alone, I will say that I have a serious problem with Article 3, which is, is related to Article 2 here. There's no way of getting around it. It's contingent, okay? So that means they're tied together at the, at the hips, okay? Based on that alone, I'm against Article 3, and I'm definitely against Article 2 because it's not been on the open market and where the taxpayers of Hampton, like me, okay, are going to help pay for the village district making money on a piece of property. And I'm against it. Frank? <clears throat> I agree with 80% of that. Um, the problem I have is with there were going to be 75 spaces, which is probably what you mentioned. How many are we going to give up for free? None. None. Well, all we kept mentioning was uh, we were going to give it to, you know, let the employees and stuff. Not for free, Brian. Be able to park. Maybe for a lesser price if they agreed to a long term, okay, well, a long term like lease type of thing. So we don't know that. Yet. They'd get a discount, okay. but they wouldn't get nothing is free. Um, another problem I have is with the bonding. Um, we sat at a meeting last December. And we were told <coughs> by the, um, well, it was by a couple of the selectmen and Mr. Waltz that no one's buying the bond. In fact, the town didn't bond anything this year because nobody buys them anymore. I mean, they're just, so unless we have something that's going to be bought, um, I mean, because that was the, what, what we were told, is the town wasn't going to bond anything anymore because they're not buying bonds of this size. Do you have an answer to that? Yeah. Every okay. public thing that gets built is by a bond. They used to. They don't anymore. They do. The town so doesn't <laughs> bond <laughs> anything. Maybe the town can buy a bond. My friends make hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars selling okay. bonds. Every day. I'm just saying that we, we, we were just, told. I know what you're told, but please just go on the bond bank and right. Google it, and you can see. I mean, I did it the other day just to look at it, and there's a ton of them there. Yeah, yeah, they're out there, there, but they're not being No, no, bought. no, you have to understand. There's a whole list of the ones that were just bonds, bonded, it, and they buy them every every yeah. day. And I hate well, that. I mean, I, they're, they're they're chunk bonds. Bonds. I mean, I, I'd like fiscally. to interject that I get a notice whenever there's New Hampshire bonds for sale. I get a notice, and there's bonds practically every month yeah. that my company seems to think I would be interested in buying it. So they are. Okay, I don't, I don't like to say that. I can only go by what I was told. So I was. We're sitting in a room that was bonded a year ago. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, Dave. <coughs> no question. Sunny. Okay. So we have this moved and seconded. No, we don't have a second. Oh, we don't have second. Okay. All right. All those in favor of Article Two. To recommend it. To recommend. Yeah. Incoming medical. Forty-four. Yes, Sunny. Welcome. Incoming. Forty-four. Sweetbriar Lane. Okay. Opposed. Keep your hands Glenn, up. Glenn, Brian, Michael, Tip. Yes. Glenn Farrell. Yes. Okay. <coughs> what are the numbers, Joan? Okay. Well, I. Okay, we've got a total of. Seven two four. Yeah. There's eleven of us. So we've got seven. a total of. We have eleven here. Yeah. yeah. There were 11, four opposed. Eleven here, and there's four opposed. So there's seven recommended. Seven recommended. 
Okay. Thanks, Doctor. Okay. Article 4. Uh, I move Article 4 is printed in the warrant. Okay. Um, what article 3? No, Article 3 contains no money. money. Oh, okay. So we only need to do the money article. All right. So for Article 4, um, <coughs> is there really any discussion on that? Do I have a second on that? I'll second it. And we don't need any discussion. We just went over the budget. All those in favor? Vote should be the same. Opposed? Abstain. Okay. And abstentions? Okay. I have. Uh, so we have 10, 10. What was the numbers on that? Ten, well, we have one more. Don't leave. Two. One more. Born out of four. With money. Yeah, with two, money two more, actually. Yeah. Two. Last two. Oh, sorry. Wrote what were the. What were, the, what were the numbers on that, Joan, just so I can sp say it into this little recorder? Oh, okay, it was Recommend. Uh, 10, yep. recommended, one against. One against, thank you. Mm -hmm. Five, Article 5. I'll move Article 5 is printed in the warrant, although this is a private petition warrant article. Second. So we've heard discussion on this from the town standpoint. We did? Uh, yeah, the no. deliberative session. This was this the flag? No, 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 all right. Oh, yeah, I think so. <laughs> the, the other one. The other one. Hey, it's late, guys. Yeah. Uh, um, this petition article seeks to acquire $2,000 to purchase and install <coughs> an illuminated flagpole for flying the American flag at the precinct parking lot on the corner of Brown Avenue and Ashworth Avenue. The flag shall be illuminated from sunset to sunrise. And who is going to be raising and lowering it daily? And, and it won't be raised and lowered. The, uh, I talked to the petitioner and the flagpole and a solar-powered light that illuminates the um, the flag during the night. The cost will be two thousand dollars. It doesn't have to be lower than raised. If it's a little warm. Exactly, and it'll be illuminated through a solar device. We're not going to have to run wires any place because that was a concern that I had. Okay, so just flag, as we already have the flag was uh, mm -hmm. donated by an anonymous. That's uh, what I have on mine. Uh, the district uh, yeah. resident. You raise the money, just no, did you get? I have a solar did you get a pole too? Just no, just the flag. Just the flag. So who's, uh, you, do you want to donate the pole? <laughs> so we can eliminate this. So that's a one-time. One-time. Yeah. One-time. Yeah. Except when you have to uh, replace the flag every year. Or the solar stuff goes to pieces. It's in the parking lot. Yeah. <laughs> so the two thousand dollars is intended to cover the pole, right. the so flag, right. and the solar panel. No, we have the flag. Yeah. The flag is already been donated. So the, the pole and the solar, the, the solar plant panel. And the installation. Yeah. Okay. You have a really heavy duty flag because down here the wind always blows. You have a heavy duty? Yeah, it's But it, even if it goes it donated, donated, I've already been talking to many people that they would donate. The yeah. yeah. reason why it's a donated flag. All right. Did I, we got have I got one of those. I second it. over the Capitol, and it's not designed to fly very long anywhere. We have the motion and the second. All those in favor? Opposed? I'm for America. Havis, Lapham, anybody down the cliff? What do we do with this? I don't know. Okay, three. What about you? My favorite. Good. <laughs> so, okay. Legitimate purpose. All right. So we have seven recommend, three opposed, and one abstain for the record. Okay. All right. 
Okay. Legitimate purpose. It's well thought out. I appreciated mm -hmm. the volunteer of the flag as well. Mm -hmm. The fact that Nolan Solar is a nice plus. I think that's a precinct issue is why I abstain. Now, moving on to... The whole budget is a precinct issue. Number two, as you heard me say. <laughs> uh, I will move Article 6 as printed in the warrant. This, again, is a private petition warrant article to see if the village district will raise the sum of $5,000 as a one-time donation to the Hampton Moving Wall Committee to help defray the cost of bringing the Vietnam Veterans Memorial Moving Wall to Hampton Beach. This was discussed quite uh, a, a bit at the open meeting in January. Of that junior this high is school. the one I said we heard the town public hearing. I will second that. Yeah. Okay. Any discussion? Any questions? I'll start. Yes. Oh, wait, <laughs> wait a minute. Sonny. <laughs> Nope. No, David? I, I will, I'll vote against it again. So. <laughs> okay. Brian? I'll vote for it again. So. I will just repeat one of my people in town that I always disagree with, Red Rice. He <laughs> said this should not be supported, and that's the way I feel. He did not say that. No. He said what? He is completely in support of it. He will even volunteer to work for it. But it has to be raised by private money. Right. Not private money. Right. You're right. I stand corrected. Private money. Stand up. Stand right. Thank you, John. Public hearing. I usually go and agree with for So I stand correct. Thank you, Matt. I usually agree with them, but this time I won't. Yes, so Mr. Rice has expressed a complete, uh, and I think, compelling argument that we shouldn't be compelling taxpayers to pay for this kind of thing, given it's a private entity and all. And I did uh, agree with that argument and, and held it on my own, but there was one added thing that got me was when Uda was at the last village district meeting, and she explained it more fully, and she said that she has a private person willing to fund it all. And I asked her to confirm that, and she said, yes, that's correct. Mm -hmm. And so even more of a reason not to compel taxpayers to pay for something when you have a private person who wants to, according to it, wants to pay for it all. That's what she said. So right. we have a volunteer stepping up, and you know, if we, if we pass this, we're saying, well, we don't care about volunteers. We want to compulse, we want to force people to pay. Well, was it? You know? So I I, for that yeah, reason, I absolutely this, that's yes. not no, correct no. because <laughs> she needs to send the money in like in she the already next has week. It, she said. No, she doesn't have it all. That's why she, she wants the, the extra money. money to it she all. wants to be able because she has to set the date in stone. Yeah. And that's why she was asking for the money <coughs> up front. I understood that, that it was going to cost several times about this. I understood I it that she time, said sorry. it was going to cost twenty thousand dollars, five from the town, right. five from the precinct, and the balance of that was coming from private funding. And that's why I asked her to be clear. She said at the last village district meeting, yeah. right yes. now, right. that the entire twenty thousand dollars was being offered by a private entity. She did say that. She did say that. Oh, yeah. she did say that. Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, but knowing Uda, did she mean that? Speak? Yeah, that was going to ask. What she did say was that she has someone who would like to do that. Like now, that's right. different, I think, than um, the to? semantics of saying <laughs> yeah. someone's ready to pay for it now. I don't. I think the proof is in the pudding. I didn't say I someone wants that was ready to pay for it now. I she didn't said, say they were ready. That's your word. She <laughs> said, I didn't say ready. Oh, what I said say? that some. She said someone wants to. She has someone that wants to. All right. And and that. Right. Oh yeah. yeah. And, and and so, if 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 if, the, if we compel the taxpayers to pay, we're basically saying we favor coercion from the taxpayers more than we we favor volunteer efforts. Uh, I mean, I, I can well, imagine what Fred Rice would say if he actually okay. was aware of this. All right, Steve. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything. Thank you. At the moment. <laughs> At the moment. Bob. I, I'm just confused by the word compel. This is a warrant. That is our compulsory. Uh, no. no. Will you allow me to finish my statement before you misstate it? <laughs> when you vote on a warrant article, you're not compelled to vote for it or against it. This would only occur if the voters chose to vote for it, and I wouldn't consider that to be compulsion. Well, it is for those who chose to vote against it and had to pay the damn tax anyway. Well, that's why we call it a democracy. Um, Michael. 
Okay, well, I, went through this I went through this at the public hearing and I heard enough. I'm not going to change my vote. I'm against it. Okay, Chair. I voted uh, for this at the public hearing and, I, and I'll continue to. It's um, it, it's not the Fred Rice and, uh, Warren article. Uh, he had an opinion just like everybody else did. I, I happen to disagree with this. Um, as I stated at the time, I think it's a great opportunity for an educational tool for uh, not only the not only the tourists but for people of uh, of Hampton themselves. <coughs> it's a, it's a good opportunity to to teach kids about uh, that whole experience, that whole time and era. And I guess if somebody, I'm not a great legal mind, but I'm going to guess if someone stepped forward and said, you know what? I'm going to come up with 20 grand. I don't think it's compulsory that we say, no, 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 you have to take my five. I think they can give it back to this, and they can give the other five back to the town, and they can come up with the whole 20 grand. Mm -hmm. There's nothing compulsory about us saying, no, no, sit down, keep your 20. We insist on paying. You want to pay the 20? The we'll be glad to keep it and return it to the village or return it to the general treasury. So. I'm all for it. Steve, and hopefully you, the guy steps up and pays can, the point. Can you explain the complexity and how we cannot distribute money back to the taxpayers in the village district because of the nature of our budget? Wait, wait, Tim, wait. We're going to keep going down. Yeah. No, Glenn? Um, well, I, okay, now I'm going okay. to comment because I, I passed. You, oh, you yeah. comment, yeah. then I'm going to comment. Yeah. I, agree with you. I want to say, I just want to say that if somebody came forward, I actually asked at, the, at that meeting, Uda, can you divulge who this is? And she said, no, not at this mm -hmm. time, okay? If somebody came forward and said, here's the whole 20 grand, I want to sponsor this whole thing, and by being the sponsor, I want my name, you know, I want my name out there as well, get a little, because if you think about it, $20,000, if you've got a lot of, you get a lot of mileage out of that, John, you know that yourself, okay? So credit union kept in 20000 yeah, all right. Or so if Seacoast Holly said his twenty thousand because they donated a, a motorcycle to some event that the motorcycle probably cost thirty thousand. But so the thing is that this I voted against this uptown, but here this is not unlike many other things that we do here at the beach okay it's not unlike the, the sand sculpture event the concert series all of the things that we do here culture and recreation it's not unlike anything we don't already do so for that reason perhaps I will vote for it here at the beach you see because that that would be my reasoning is that it's not unlike what we already have been doing for years and years and years. Okay. Yeah, I'm done. Reason to yeah, I'm back at my turn now, right? Go ahead, please. Okay. <clears throat> I, I heard everything that Fred had to say about it, and I said this at public hearing, and I'm going to say it again. Fred is not the only person who served during the Vietnam era. My husband is a person who served in the Vietnam era, so I asked him how he felt about it. And, you know, as we're looking at stuff here, it's like, you know, $72,000 alone for professional sand sculptures and $5,000 for movie night and uh, $2,500 to learn how to pet the fish. Um, <coughs> quite honestly, for a lot of people who lived during that era, that was a very significant war and something to a lot of people's lives. And we have a couple of, I, I don't want to say a generation behind us now because we're all getting older in this room. There's probably a couple of generations behind us who don't have a clue. Maybe they should. And mm -hmm. the argument was who was bringing it? It was a private concern. Well, we all know that government doesn't always put the best foot forward. So if there's a private concern out there willing to bring something to Hampton Beach that would be an attraction on one hand and an education on the other, for a piece of change of five thousand dollars to both the city, uh, to both the town and the precinct, I'm for at least putting it before the voters and letting them decide what their conscience is. And I think that's the bigger question. 
Well, we say cultural and education, and then when we nickel and dime things, and the next time you see some kid who doesn't know squat about anything other than how low his pants can hang down, you let me know, because there's an opportunity you have to show them something that went on that speaks to where we are today in a lot of things. Mm -hmm. So I, for one, accept that opportunity to okay. do that. Madam Chair, can I ask a very quick question? Absolutely. The the statue of the lady looking out at the sea for World War II. Mm -hmm. Does anyone know who paid for that? I donated. 100% friend? Yes. Oh, lady at the, the beautification sea. committee mm -hmm. plants all the flowers we around. We do the flowers. Right. Sometimes it's a partnership. Sometimes you got to bring something to the table to just get things to move. And an example of that was the Seafood Festival that we started in three tents in the state parking lot that is now disaster. known up and down the seacoast. And I'll throw something else out there, too. I had the experience, and you've heard me say this before, but for the new members who haven't heard me say this, I had the opportunity to be on the Sandcastle uh, <coughs> contest on Miami Beach have a stranger standing next to me tell me it wasn't as good as the one at Hampton Beach. And oh, by the way, they weren't from Hampton. I turned around and said, well, I'm from Hampton. And they said, oh, well, we're not, but we've been to that one, and we think that one was much better than this one here on Miami Beach. So, y you know, sometimes the little things that we do turn into bigger things, more graceful things down the road, and I think this might be the opportunity for something with a, a different perspective. I'm not, I'm not going to say anymore. And just for the record, I'm a Vietnam veteran, too. Mm -hmm. And I was in the service during that period also. Okay, amen. And thank you for your record, service. The Vietnam all War started as a very small thing. Oh, we're not oh, right. <laughs> 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 All right. It grew into a very big thing. All right. All those in favor of this. Did you get that? I discount the no's and then subtract. <laughs> you might have <laughs> noses. These are all yeses. Okay. okay. So, uh, those not in favor. Okay, not in favor. Fair not in all. favor. It is interesting, you know, that uh, people talk about educating the young about the Vietnam War. Yet when someone makes a factual statement yes. about the Vietnam War, he shut it down. Oh, fascinating no, exercise in education. I'd say. What was the count to? Okay. Okay. And abstentions. That one, okay. So, we have lost six. Six, yes, or no, one abstention. Okay. Okay, let's squeak through. I took care of that. All right. Yeah. That's it. All right, no, that's not it. Public meeting now? Yeah. So, are you going to have that now? We're going to close this. Well, now we've got to have the. Uh, listen to the non public. <laughs> Well, no, right now, no, we just did the presentation. So I'm going to call this to an end at 9.10, and I'm going to open it for the public hearing. Public hearing on the box. At, at 9.11. Well, officially. No, it doesn't have to go through this. Public hearing. It's already done. No. Begins. At is there anyone here from the public? I gotta ask. Is there anyone here from the public who wishes to speak on this? I'm from the public. A long time ago. You've spoken. Was. Okay. So I'm being denied to speak. Seeing yes. none. Yes. Thank you. At nine eleven. Then public hearing is closed. Just like it rec noted in the record that I did ask to speak and was denied. Thank you. Closed at nine twelve. Tim. Because what did you want to speak on that you have not already spoken? It closed the public hearing. It's over. Yes. Bottom line is, I did not say I was from the You're public. The you say you, you You're said on the you committee. Well, <laughs> so let it be recorded. I'm the only one that can get away with that. All right. I did it because I Thank you for your why. endurance. But quickly. All right. Yeah. Nobody else can leave. Well, no, we're not done. I mean, we're not done. Now meeting. we're going to go back and continue. Yes, we're going to go back. We have some things to clean up. We're closing the meeting. public meeting. You're and going we have to do it on. All right, everybody. I don't want to be here till tomorrow. They can go. Right? You can go. Thank oh, you God. very much. <laughs> I'm having the best birthday of my life. All right. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Know what? Happy birthday to you. <laughs> don't you leave, Paul. I'm not. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you got it really, huh? We've got to get <laughs> Brian out of here. All right. No. All right. We have some minutes. Something. All right. Yes. Where's my sheet?
Thank you. Take that one. We have another one. How long is it? Okay, approval of minutes. <laughs> All right. Um, we are all set with that. We've got the approval of minutes from January 20th. Okay. 20th and the 30th. Okay. I'll explain in a minute. Let's do the let's do the 20th and get it out of the way. All right. Any changes to page one? Is there anyone absent on the 20th? Glenn. Uh, Glenn was excused. But it's always going to happen. We're in such a big committee. <laughs> <laughs> Any changes on page two? Thank you. You oh, thank you very much. Thank even you. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Anything on page three? Okay. Uh, I'll make a motion. motion. I'll make a motion to accept the minutes. Second motion. All those in favor? Jim. 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 Thank Olaf. you, Jim. Okay. Jim. All those in favor? Unanimous. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Except for, Except for those who abstained. All right. One, now, one, one abstention. The 30th was that brief meeting that we had. Was it the 31st? 31st. 31st. I'm sorry. After I've got the 30th. Okay. Shoot me. Um, that was. Oh, can I see those? That was the one sheet, the vote that we took at the end of deliberative session. Yeah. Glenn, you weren't there. Joe Grzbowski wasn't there. Jim, you weren't there. Rainier wasn't there. And Dave, you weren't there? Okay. No, he wasn't. So you'll have to abstain. Um, that was just the, the final vote that right. we took. You all have copies of that. Mm -hmm. I have sure, a motion. I that was my motion that's referenced in this document. <laughs> do, you want a, do you want a medal on that one? I want to go home. May I finish the sentence? No, I want to go home. Once. All right. No. <laughs> I believe that that was my motion there, and yeah. it was moved with saltier language than is depicted. But nonetheless, I move we adopt the. Oh, minutes. thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Yeah, I'll second. Okay. All go those ahead, in favor of those who were there. Were there. Okay. Were there. And the rest will be abstentions. Same. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That is done. I All right. I didn't know we were doing anything after the delivery. That's okay. We'll take that and shoot you at sunrise. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm now, what one of you Put your name on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 14. Yeah, we'll get you on the wall. There you go. 14th okay. yeah. of what? I didn't have 14th on the wall. All right. Let's do that with the 20th. But no, you know no, what, no, at, at, eight, this, at this point, Fourteen. on the 14th, did anybody have any corrections at all to the minutes of the 14th? No. You've all had those copies no. for two minutes. Let's vote on the 14th and get that away. Okay. All right. okay. I'll make a motion to uh, accept, accept the minutes, minutes from the 14th. The 14th. Second. Okay. This is the uh, Warren article meeting that was non, the non-public one, the non-public hearing one. Workshop. Right. right. The one before the public hearing. Right. 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 Okay. Thank you. All those in favor? Unanimous. Opposed? Was okay. anybody uh, attending that meeting? Now, the only one left, and mm -hmm. we'll just finalize it in the next meeting, um, you should all have, well, you should have a copy, but you don't, because I didn't send it to you. Which Tim sent that? it to me, and I forgot to send it out, so I apologize, which is why we're not going to do it. The meeting of the 8th, that was the meeting that we did the final review. There were a lot of questions about the final review. Oh, okay. And on top of that, we lost audio for a, a period of time. Oh, yeah. Okay? For that reason, like tonight, is why we, Tim went through it and did a lot of work to put dialogue in there. Yeah. Okay? And like we're doing tonight, Joan is... The other minutes will still exist, but this will be a dialogue attachment. Okay. All right. So I promise you'll all have your copies by tomorrow. Did, we'll did you get it able? To, were you able to retrieve one from uh, Penn Central? That was the whole meeting. Yeah, I have the video uh, okay. on YouTube. And I've captured. I basically I transcribed everything from the moment that yeah. uh, 
Uh, Eileen completed her motion until the time we took the vote. Yeah. Every so word is captured, and I basically embedded it inside of Jones Minutes at the appropriate location, highlighting that the transcripts begin, transcript ends, everything in between is the transcript. They have all kinds of problems with the sound thing. Yeah. Well, yeah. We, <laughs> to, to let you know, we had three meetings, okay, that part mm -hmm. of it there was no audio to, mm -hmm. and that's what this was an important meeting I, I, I'm not going to go over the other meetings and do the same thing to those but this was an important meeting there were a lot of questions on the meeting so um, Tim agreed to do it like tonight so, so we're going to hold on that, that was like 10 pages of transcript of it. Yeah. Yeah. It, was a, it was a lot of work so we won't be able to prove that in the last of the 11th no you got to get a copy because I'm reading it won't make a difference I know I won't make a difference it won't make a difference but for legal standpoint for the record Okay. We'll have it here. Oh, All right. One more piece of something here uh, before we go into non public. And I'm going as fast as I can, guys. Bear with me. I have more pieces of stuff than <laughs> what I'm looking for, and I can I can talk while I'm looking for it. Jim Waddell, as you know, and it was in the paper had sent me a request under RSA 91A, okay? And, of course, the paper never really talks to me, but that's okay. And they just put something in that was said at the meeting. But had they spoken to me, they would have been told that I had, in fact, responded to Jim officially. You did, yes. All right, and here is the problem, and I'm just, I've got it. I'll send it all out for you to read what my response to this was. No, I'm going to, I'll send it around. Anybody looking to read it? But basically, what I want to point out with this is that every year, for as long as I can remember, whether I was the chair or not, I always take that time to go over emails. When you send an email out to quorum, it becomes a meeting the minute you send it to someone and that someone responds. For that reason, I have always said, and you all know this, do not send me an email that you want a response to. That has a quorum. Okay? Because the minute I respond, I have created a meeting. All right. I know I go through this every year. The only one who might have missed it maybe was Glenn. You came a little bit later, I think. I've heard it previous. Okay. And I do it ad nauseum. Well, what happened is Selectman Wardell asked me a question under RSA 91A in the form of an email that was also sent to most of you, if not all of you. If I had answered him, it would have constituted a meeting, all right? I saw Selectman Mordell, and I told him about that. And his response was to send me a second email, <laughs> all right, um, telling me that I basically under 91A had five days to respond to him. So that put me in a, in a dilemma, all right? Because at that point, I was into the fifth day of the response, and I had said, I don't respond to emails, put it to me in writing, or, but I don't respond to emails. Well, anyway, the long and the short of it is that not to put any jeopardy on the budget committee, I did respond to it in the email. And basically, I denied it because the request was for records for meetings and there were no outside meetings ever held by this budget committee other than what we held in public and has been recorded in public record both written and in video and that's basically my response You're, I'm more than happy to have you read it um, to understand what I did send back to him and actually actually I might as well read it to you I previously pointed out that an email communication is not a recognized form of official communication with the budget committee please be advised I will request that a copy of this email be attached to the minutes of the next budget committee meeting 
your request under RSA 91-A um, um, are not applicable since no meeting of the Budget Committee was convened outside of public view at any time, nor were there any attempts to fix a final figure. Clearly a motion was made for a bottom line budget figure, explained, open to amendment for which there was none, and voted on in public view, including a video record. I am requesting that any future con uh, communication be done in writing and not email. So I did respond um, contrary to what a lot of people think. This was, it was not my choice to respond this way, but you know, I, under the time constraint, I didn't want any jeopardy calls on the budget committee not following through a 91A, and that was the answer. And you're free to read the request. I I'm, I'm want to enter into the record, Joan, both of these. Um, email them. I can email those to you, and I'll leave them up here for anyone to read what the request was for and why it was denied. Madam Chair, if you email Joan, you email the rest of us. Yeah, I have no problem with that. This will now become, because it was sent out as a quorum, okay, I, it will be public record. Point of information, are you saying that your response would have constituted a meeting? I thought you had to have a quorum. Well, the, the, mm. when you have an email that goes out to the quorum, a response. Yeah, but you had also said, you were talking earlier about if you send me an email I shouldn't respond to it because that would constitute a meeting. I thought you had to have a quorum to constitute a meeting. You did. That, but that you d he did, by the way, he sent it out originally. Yeah. He sent it out to more than one yeah. person? No, I'm not talking. I'm talking to the point I thought you had made earlier that he was if you, when you said, if you send me. If I a, responded to if it. If you responded, no, if you said, if any of us sent you an email, mm -hmm. you couldn't respond because that would constitute a meeting. Mm -hmm. I thought you had, a, if I sent you an email, I'm that, sorry, that would be out. a quorum. If you, if you attached it, I mean, no. people do send me emails. Sure. All right. But I don't typically send any information out other than an information only. And Bob, you've seen that I do information no. only, do not respond. No. I, it, the idea is you do not <coughs> conduct business and conversation online. It only ends up getting you in trouble. The way this one was sent out, it was sent out to a quorum to begin with. Yeah, I okay? understand Okay, so well. that any re a response that I would give it now but, constitutes uh, yeah, my having to. If two members it. of this committee send each other an email, that that's would not. not a no, that's that between. Not no, that's a between the two of you. But remember that what you shouldn't be do to me. It stays cleaner, and you stay out of problems with 91A if you don't conduct business in an email because. It can go from you to Mike, but then Mike can copy yeah. everybody in here. That's where the problem is. It's not. Yeah, if it gets out to everybody, then you have a problem. Right. Yeah. And that's. You hit eight. And <laughs> it happens when you give a response. Yeah. Any of us can send out an information only one way. So when you vehicle. respond to all, that's what gets yeah. us some right. trouble. Right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So. Always has. <laughs> just trying to make that mud a little bit clearer and not let anybody think that I disregarded a request from this committee. If I may. Yes. Well, I'm bringing up the point, I think. I mean, Eileen has had this stance forever, as far yeah. as I know. Yeah. And as I told her privately, and I might have done so in public, and I'm doing so again publicly, I think she interprets it far too strictly. For purposes of being safe, I, I think that uh, the law allows for a lot more room to even include reply all. As long as the decision is not being effectuated there. You know what? I'm really. But that's my opinion. I'm okay. real clear. Her no opinion was that in her opinion is what she has to act on. And that's what she did by saying, I'm not going to reply to an email you sent to the whole group. So that's what it comes down to right there. So if anybody has a doubt that I don't take 91A seriously, I will tell you. And for those who've sat with me in seminars with it, um, I go every year. And have. I, I can tell you there's some other people in this town that do not. I put in a request for that on a one eight three or four months ago. He still not a lot of receivers. All and right. I was told to talk to the attorney general. So you want a, a motion? Thank or you. To court. I'm going to move, gonna move this along. We have, um, I need a motion I'll to make go a motion. into um, non-public. Into non-public. Wait a minute, i got to have the number. I've got to have the number. 
Ninety-one-A colon three small a. I'll make a motion. Sure. Okay. Second. Okay. Second. I made it. And, and Mike second. seconded it. Okay. At what time? Nine thirty. Nine. Yeah. Almost nine thirty. Nine twenty-eight. And that'll be the only stuff that I'll give you whatever we do after that. Do you think? Your time frame. Madam sure Chair, procedural question. Do you anticipate sealing these minutes or opening the question of whether they should be sealed? That is to say, the minutes to this non public meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You are going to see or suggest that we seal the minutes to this non public meeting. So they will not be available to the public. I don't object. I just want to be clear. Well, we'll discuss it. We'll discuss it. Not okay. not, that's not my decision to make. It's yours. Just wanted to be clear. That right we now, we're just that. going into right. non public. Thank you. And hopefully, we'll get out of it before tomorrow. <coughs> I'm stuck in my chair. <laughs> there you go. Hopefully we get out of this for a while. All right. Is Joan going to leave? Joan is going to leave. And if she leaves, who's going to take the minutes? Would this not much to take? Uh, we'll All right. I, I just got done telling her I'll, I'll follow up with okay. her on the time we need Really? So while we're waiting for the meeting, we want to sign this is full. What they do now is a new thing, supplemental signature. I didn't know because I'd never been one. Yeah, well, this is a virtual experience. It's a village district. So <laughs> if you want to sign it, <laughs> and then the chairman, and then the only other person well, that hasn't signed it is Tim. <laughs> and at the beginning oh. of the meeting, he told me what I'm going to do. And if he doesn't want to, that's fine. I've got this. I've got enough. <laughs> 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 that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's you want to ask? Only you you want to ask? <laughs> oh, yeah. Because what I'm going to do is... I'm going to copy this tonight, and I'll post it at the four places. I'll put it in the window here, and then the royal no, mail. It's actually him. I found his wife's so taking care of all that for him. For everybody. And I have to post this along with the warrant, which... Thank you, Jim. But he'll be, you know, you guys want to come around, we could do like a round table. Okay, Hi, Joan. Hi. Thank you very much. We'll see you next Wednesday yeah. at the Builder District meeting. No one has all those cuss words in the minutes. We don't need yeah. that. Yeah. What, what? No, no one has words. No one has words. Don't really cuss words. Just a little bit of... I'm sure she thinks of some while she's doing it. Yeah. <laughs> all right. The castle's walking over that castle. Look, she's got that. She doesn't cuss at all. She doesn't even think of all right. that. All right. Hi, Joan. Back to this. Right. See you next week. Good night, Joan. Good night, Joan. Good night, Joan. Good night, Joan. Do we need to shut the door? Yeah. Oh, please. Socket it up. Yeah, okay. Okay. Next, if you don't. Shut the lights off? Just, 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 just,